regular season for the Trojans in at least 35 years. The last time that may have happened was about 1974, and we'll go into that a little bit later on in the broadcast. Two receivers to each side here. Wimberley from the right hash will take the snap. He's looking down the field. He's got four wide receivers going deep, but he's under pressure. He's looking to escape. He does escape. He's got room. Looks like he's going to get the first down. Wimberley, big gain, about 20 yards. So on a third and nine, Manny Wimberley under all kinds of pressure. Uh, the Panthers could not get him corralled, and Manny Wimberley escapes, and he's going to pick up a big first down. He's over midfield. Stepped out of bounds at the PRP 48-yard line. I am not just going to be a homer on purpose tonight, but the PRP Panthers, their lineup is not something that is uh, very readily available. Their roster on the KHSA website is a little bit sparse, and so we'll do our best here to try to get you some of the names of the uh, PRP players. Give on first and 10 to right, dancing left. He's got about five yards, and he'll be driven out of bounds by number 92 and 34 for the PRP Panthers. Yeah, it was 34, Kylon Malone on the roster that we uh, have just received. <laughs> uh, trips formation again. The ball's on the left hash. Second and five maybe. Quick screen to the right. Number two, Smith will have the ball. He gets over the first down marker, breaking several tackles to pick up about 11 or 12 yard gain on the quick screen pass. So Cameron Smith picking up a first down and Trojans now with two first downs on the move. A couple of big gainers, a 20 yard run by Wimberley, a 12 yard catch by Cameron Smith on the screen pass. And the Trojans are deep now in the Panther territory. Ball's on the 33-yard lines. Wimberley now in a pistol look with Lavelle Wright right behind him. He'll take, he'll give to Wright. Wright's going to break it off the right side. He's going to break one tackle, give a big stiff arm, and run out of bounds. It looks like he's inside the 10-yard line, maybe just outside the 10-yard line. They're going to spot him at about the 12. It's so a 21-yard gain, and we're uh, just three and a half minutes into this first quarter, and the Trojans threatening already again. Heavily favored Trojans, 9-0 and versus a 2-7 and squad of the Panthers that we'll talk about more in a little bit. Ramaj Adams on the catch, number six, breaks one tackle, breaks a second. He's got outside. He's got an opportunity, reaching for the pylon. Oh, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds before he could reach and get his hand and get the football just inside the pylon there. So out of bounds, and it'll bring up first and goal from the one-yard line. The Trojans are going to leave their regular lineup in the game. We have seen them from time to time go to a jumbo package with Oxendine in the game. It's uh, their version of the Wildcat with Lavelle Wright and Oxendine and Campbell in the backfield together. Wimberley will take the snap. He's going to turn and give to Wright, who is stuck in the backfield. Big play by the PRP Panthers. Again, 34, who I believe, again, is Kylon Malone. Uh, he's a big kid, and boy, a good-looking kid. He's a sophomore, and so one of the things we're going to talk about, I talked with Coach Williams from, from PRP before the game. They've got a lot of young kids, and so they have struggled, but a lot of talent out there, and you're likely to see a really solid PRP team in the coming years. 8.46 to go. The big package is in the game now with Campbell and Oxendine and Lavelle Wright, and that is going to be a two-yard touchdown run for Lavelle Wright. So on this second down play, they go to Jarrell Campbell, Octavius Oxendine, and Lavelle Wright in a wildcat look. I would call it the jumbo package because those are some big fellas in the backfield as lead blockers, and Lavelle Wright takes the direct snap and goes into the end zone following the big block. Uh, of Octavius Oxendine. So with 8.39 to go, Caden Logsdon will come on to attempt the point after. Six to nothing Trojans early on here, heavily favored with an opportunity to accomplish something that uh, we just have not seen from North Harden football. So Caden Logsdon will add the point after. 
the left footer, number 17, knocking it through. And so the Trojans have taken an early 7-0 lead, 8.39 to go in the first quarter. This is a Hardin County Educational Community Television Student Production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Ryan Harris of Remax Premier Properties. For all your real estate needs, contact Ryan at 270-723-4626, and he'll get the job done. So Caden Logston here now setting up again from the 40-yard line to kick it away. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in our uh, early broadcast, we were having some audio difficulties. The PRP Panthers uh, have no stats listed for the season on the cage to say website. The roster only has about eight or ten numbers on it. There's a, a squib kick that's fielded beautifully up front by the Panthers. Number 42 comes up with that, and so that was a good play there. It looks like that's uh, Cameron Scheisser, um, 42, to recover that kick is a junior number 42 Cameron Scheisser so as I was saying just not a lot of information here we've gotten a um, roster here just in the last couple of minutes that has a little more information but uh, we'll talk about some of the uh, players here specifically at quarterback for the Panthers is number one Maurice Soja I remember Maurice Soja from last year very talented athlete about 6'3 six, 6'4 six, big kid Good quarterback, a great athlete. He's going to give right now to number two, Anthony Anderson. Anderson showing some speed. He's got the corner. He's going to pick up eight or nine yards. Very close to a first down. It's going to depend on the spot here. It looks like it's going to be a second and one. So Anthony Anderson, number two, the uh, running back, who uh, Coach Williams told me would be their kind of their key ball carrier for the game tonight. Uh, off to a great start on a, on a big first down carry there. So uh, – with the well-fielded kick, the Panthers are already over midfield to the Trojan 49. Play action look. Soja looked like Campbell may have gotten to him just that quickly. They were trying to throw a quick slant. Soja threw that about 10 yards short of his target, and, and Soja's a pretty solid quarterback. Runs well, throws well, great athlete but just was way off on that throw, and, and it was Jarrell Campbell, 48, right in his face immediately on that throw. This front seven of the Trojans, as we talked about last week in the big Central Harden victory, one of the best I've ever seen, and so uh, Coach Williams knows they've got to get it out quick. Third and one, toss sweep now uh, <laughs> to reverse pass. Wide open is Soja overthrown. Number five on the reverse pass. Came around, and number five is Caden Anderson, a freshman, uh, was playing wide receiver. They toss sweep, reverse pass. Uh, they had number eight, who is Elijah Reed, open by 20 yards down the field. I don't think Anderson could see him down the field. He went to Soja, who was also wide open for a first down, and it was thrown three yards over his head. So a great opportunity there goes by the wayside. Empty backfield under center. It's got to be Soja on a quarterback sneak, but that does not sound like a great idea to me. No, they're going to go jet sweep left and run backwards. Horrible idea. That was just a bad play call, a bad execution. They give it to Anthony Anderson on a jet sweep. He bellies backwards five yards, and they lose five yards. Anything you want to do needs to be downhill on a fourth and one like that. So the Trojans will take over as they make a big play on a fourth and one. Panthers give away several opportunities there to make a big play. They're in a 4-3 uh, look here, two deep look. There's a screen pass to Josh Moore. He's deep in his backfield, makes one man miss, spinning, reversing field. He's got space. 42 is there, can't make the tackle. PRP showing a lot of speed to the football. Looked like they might be in trouble. But Josh Moore isn't going to get anything on that screen pass. It's going to bring up a second and 11 again there in PRP territory. A ball at the 47-yard line. 
Bring up second 11, 7.34 to go. Still first quarter, early uh, action here. Two wide receivers to both sides on this second and 11 here. Manny Wimberly ready to take the snap. Blitz coming. Malone coming up the middle. He's right there in Wimberly's face. Ball thrown. Looked like Cameron Smith, the intended target, and he could not come down with the football. So the screen pass is incomplete, bringing up third and 11. The last third and long on third and nine they had. Wimberly under tremendous pressure broke loose and picked up a big first down. We'll see what they've, uh, what they've got in store here. The Trojans. I would guess will look downfield. If Wimberly can't find anything, I'm sure he'll be looking to run with the football. We've got a man look. Big blitz coming. Wimberly trying to scramble for it this time. He's knocked out of bounds. He won't get there. And there's a flag down in the backfield. It's probably going to be an illegal block. That is where you usually see that. And it is a holding call indicated here. If I were the uh, PRP Panthers, it looks like it's going to bring up a, a third and eight or nine. They may not accept the penalty here. And I'm sorry, bring up a fourth down in eight or nine. Actually, they're spotting it with just a yard gain. So if they do not accept the penalty, which they are not, Coach Williams is going to elect to not take the penalty. It sets up a fourth down and ten. I didn't know if in PRP Panther territory, if Coach Thompson would go ahead and go for it here on fourth and ten, but he will send on Alex White, the punter in the punting unit. So number 32, Alex White is back. Several substitutions occurring. Michael Lunds checking in late with the punt team. It has been whistled. It is, again, fourth and ten. Lund's getting set to the left of snap. White is ready. Weak snap. White doesn't handle it. He's going to have to run with it. And the adventures continue on the punt squad. They're going to lose about 10 yards. And so both teams are exchanging possessions at about midfield. PRP on their first possession gives it up on a fourth and one by losing five yards. And now the Trojans with a weak snap and then a poorly handled uh, snap by Alex White. He drops it, runs with the ball, and the PRP Panthers with 7-14 remaining in the first quarter will take over first down and 10. One back, the backfield. The give is going to be to that back. This Anthony Anderson, number two. He's got yardage straight ahead. The uh, PRP line doing a pretty good job of getting a little bit of a push against this really strong Trojan front seven. And so Anderson picks up six yards. It's going to bring up a second and four. It looks like that is at the 41-yard line. Tight end to the left. Shotgun formation. Soja takes the snap. He's going to give to and uh, give to 15. 15 does a nice job of getting a few yards for on the he carry. Was, he was strung out pretty well there. Gain of one. Was fortunate to get just back over the line of scrimmage. Third and a uh, short three. It's Clayton Helms, and Helms is one of the key players for the PRP Panthers. Coach Williams was speaking highly of him before the game. So 15 uh, figures to be a large factor in their offensive plan tonight. So tight end, wide out left, slot and wide out to the right, Anderson to the left. And there they are, uh, the, the Trojans jumping off sides. I had a conversation All with sides Trojans before they came about slowing down this Trojan Gain of five for PRP, front. first and down 10 for the Panthers. Ideas was to throw the ball quick, don't give them a chance to get the Soja, and then to try to vary up the snap count so that they could get the Trojans to jump off side offsides slow down the rush and so on a big uh, third and three they're able to get them off sides play action look wow pass was broken up there and I couldn't see who broke Lamafa on the pass breakup second Lamafa. and ten um, for PRP Jordan Lamafa is uh, the one who was able to break that up it was a quick slant again play action look quick slant 
Coach Williams trying to get the ball out of his quarterback's hand immediately. He's not going to have him holding the football. That time it almost backfired. So ball is on the 35-yard line. Panthers are giving the ball to Anderson again and just couldn't find anything. It looks like it's 10 Michael Lunds in the backfield to make the stop there. Anderson was going to cut it up, fought better of it, took it outside. Lost a three on the play by right PRP. There. Tackle so by Lunds. Ball is back from the 31 to the 34. Three yard loss. And so that'll bring up a third down and 13. Not the situation Coach Williams wanted to get his young offense into. Coach Williams says he's only got 10 seniors on the team. And only three of those 10 seniors have been playing all four years of high school football. So this PRP team is incredibly young. A lot of young talent, but very inexperienced. Throw to the left. So this pass Receiver is incomplete. Slipping down and falling. Tended for Reed. Bad looking throw again. Play action pass. It was number five, Anderson. Fourth and it 13. Was the intended receiver. And he slipped and fell. It looked like it came out of Soja's hand pretty well. Uh, like there was an opportunity there for number five, Caden Anderson, to come up with the ball. And he just slipped and fell on his cut on the hitch route. Still would have left them fourth and five. But at fourth and 13, they're going to punt the football away. Rough snap. Does not get it out. It's blocked by Jordan Lovett. Ball is still loose. Panthers will jump on it. PRP's punt is blocked by it's be Jordan first and 10 Lovett. For the Trojans from about the 40. Trojans yard will take line, over. Their own 47 yard first and line. 10. Folks, this is one of the darnest things I've seen. They keep exchanging At the 47 yard line. Within four to five yards of midfield. So after a drive of about 15 to 16 yards, Panthers back up and then get a punt block. That ball was not handled well. Blocking wasn't handled well, and the punter did not get the ball out well. Malone is going to be blitzing again. They're bringing a lot of pressure, trying to get Wimberly off his spot, but he just runs by it. Number eight, Harris is open deep. They're going to throw a flag on that flag play, on the play. interference. I got to be honest with you there, number 18 for PRP. Intended for Marcus Harris. Great position and great uh, coverage. Uh, number 18 is Nicholas Manis. Nicholas is right there. Nicholas made a good play with his hands up. Problem is, uh, pass interference against guard, PRP. Just he runs into uh, Marcus Harris uh, immediately there and uh, knocks him uh, off of the play before the ball arrives. And um, that's obviously going to be a pass interference call against Manise and the Panthers. Ten yard penalty for a first down Trojan. They'll set up this time again from the right hash, the 38-yard line of the Panthers. Snap, give inside to Lavelle Wright. He's going right. to pick up six the carry. seven yards. Gain of six, second and four. It's a six-yard gain, bringing up a second down and four from the right hash. Again, Lavelle right now directly behind Manning Wimberly in the pistol formation look. And this time it's PRP trying to uh, All sides, PRP. They uh, don't read the snap count correctly. Not watching the football. Gain of five for a offside. first down Trojans. A five yard penalty. The Trojans will now have the ball on the 28 yard line of the PRP Panthers. So. A lot of mistakes early on both sides. Dropped punts, uh, blocked punt, several mistakes, several offside penalties, one on each side. Again, trying to take advantage of the hard count again as Wimberly back to the wristband. They're ready to play. It looks like man cover look. Blitz package coming. Quick screens to Adams. Harris has got one man to beat. Uh, Wimberly's sorry, pass to, to Ramaj Adams. Harris on the block. And Ramaj Adams will have a nice pickup of about six or seven yards. They'll bring up a second down and four, maybe second and three. Gain of seven, second and three for the Trojans. It's a 
second down. Two wide receivers to each side from the left hash. Wimberley's going to give on the stretch play to the right to LaFell Wright, and he is just right on the carry. In the backfield, nowhere to go. And um, stacked up for a big loss. That's a loss of about six yards, going to bring up a third down and loss nine. of six. Third and so ten. The Trojans again will be in um, a negative. Uh, negative situation as far as the yardage. A little behind the sticks here. They've been in this situation several times here in this game already. But they've been able to overcome those situations uh, several times here. With 3.04 to go in the first quarter, Quayshawn Davis will check into the game here at wide receiver on the same side as Josh Moore. But with 3.03 and counting, it's ju still just a 7-0 ball game. And the Trojans looking to add to that. Ball on the 28-yard line. Snap to Wimberley. He's looking down. He's under tremendous pressure. He's got two guys on him. He's going to lose 10 yards on the sack there. 34 Malone. And Wimberley 22. is sacked on the play. Uh, there also, that's uh, Zach Kelly, one of the big uh, players for the Panther defense. Kelly on the, the stop. Guys that, uh, Coach Fourth Williams and long for the Trojans. Pointed out to me as one of their leading tacklers. Zach Kelly and uh, DeMonte uh, Stringer, number 29, two of the leading tacklers for the Panthers. And so this time it's Kelly, number 22, making the big play and getting the stop. So PRP, again, a prohibitive underdog. Hanging in there at this point. Tough snap to handle again. White's going to get it away. It's a very good kick. It's going to be uh, handled. It's dropped. PRP drops it. He's Ian Patrick jumping on Fumble it. Fumble on the play. And so what was going Recovered so well for the Panthers. Ian uh, another Patry. error. First and ten. The balls on Trojans. the ground. Ian Patrick is there to jump on it. So the cornerback, in this case, cover man for the punt team, jumps on the football. And Trojans take over. First and ten. Trojans first down at the eleven with the football at the uh, eleven yard line at the 12-yard line, that is, uh, working off the left hash here. Two wide receivers to each side, so that Panther defense back out onto the field in a man-to-man -man cover look, chasing. It's Wimberly rolling to his right, looking to the sideline on the out route. Wimberly's pass is catch. complete. Throw and catch on the sideline. Cameron Smith, number two, making the reception. To Smith. So Wimberly Gain waited seven. and waited and waited, and actually Cameron Smith opened, came open late. And so on second down and three, here comes Jumbo. You've got Darren Green. You've got Jarrell Campbell. You've got Octavius Oxendine. And this is the version of the Wildcat that the Trojans use uh, with a lot of regularity. And it's Lavelle Wright to take the direct snap in this Wildcat a Jumbo look. And he's going to follow Oxendine. And guess what? Six points when you follow the big kid. Right. Five. End up in four. The zone and three. Lot. Two. All right. One. Second touchdown in the game. Trojan. So disregard what I said. Lavelle Wright. Two minutes ago. Give him the fact six. that the Pleasure Ridge Park Panthers were hanging right in there at seven to nothing. It's now thirteen to nothing, and looking at uh, Caden Logs and adding to that, the sophomore left-footed kicker is setting up to try to knock knock this thing through, get the point after, and make it a 14 to nothing ball game. The snap is good, it's down. Logsdon hit that one really well. That's onto the track, and so extra point is good. North Harden Trojans, 14. PRP Panthers, nothing. Logsdon's kick so the, uh, is good. With 147 to go in the first Harden quarter. Trojans, Trojans 14. PRP starting to take zero. control here. 147 remaining in the first quarter. And I want to remind you that our sponsors include Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com, E-Town Exterminating, 737-6900 online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. So as Caden Logston prepares to kick off, PRP Panthers. I just want to point out, Coach Williams uh, again had a really nice conversation with him before the game, and Coach Williams again was pointing out again the very few seniors on this club. He said he's starting two freshmen tonight in the ball game, 
uh, a number of sophomores, a few juniors, and very few seniors. A line drive kick uh, handled beautifully by the front line Reed. there of the on the recovery Panthers. Uh, that's number eight for first the and ten PRP at the forty-seven. And that's uh, Elijah Reed, and so Reed makes a good catch as the ball hit him right in the chest. But Coach Williams very uh, excited about his young players. I've seen this PRP team for years, saw them in the playoffs about seven or eight years ago when I was coaching at Central Harden. And they were phenomenal. They've got uh, a wide receiver in the pros at this point playing for the Tennessee Titans. They've had some really solid players as Bessie Lilo is going to jump off sides again. Coach Williams trying to use a varied snap count. And I have seen several times that the front seven of the Trojans. All sides on the Trojans. Snap counts. If you are consistent First and five. in your snap count, uh, you're going to pay for it. They're going to get in there and cause trouble. They're going to beat the ball back to the quarterback on the shotgun snap. So uh, jumping the gun on that one, so to speak. Soja will get under center this time. Play action look. Looking down the field. He's going to run with it himself there. Headed over toward the sideline with a small Don't game. Soldier on the carry. Don't go out of bounds. He's going to pick up a couple of yards there. Gain of two, second and three. And so it'll bring up a second down and three after the uh, five-yard offsides or the uh, false start penalty. And so uh, second down and three from the Trojan 46-yard line. 136 remaining now. But as I was saying, they, uh, they've got a lot of young talent on this team, this PRP team. Coach Williams is telling me that they're, they call it a freshmore team. It's like a JV team playing freshman, sophomore. Deep down the field, throw, intercepted. Soldier's pass is intercepted. Big play by the Trojans to stop a long ball down the left sideline. By Micah Parms. First and Barnes, 10, three, Trojans. Play. As Soja tried to throw one down the left sideline, taking a shot at the end zone. I kind of respect the call by Coach Williams trying to go for something, trying to make something happen here to get back in the ball game, but just uh, not really a good opportunity there as there was double coverage. It was uh, tight coverage, difficult throw, and uh, nothing happening there. But this freshmore team that uh, Coach Williams was telling me about uh, was 8-2 and two this year. Their only losses to uh, Mail and Manuel up there in Louisville. So an eight and two record for that young group of PRP Panthers. Wembley's pass Many for of right them are playing incomplete. tonight from that same squad. So we've seen in the past, like I was saying earlier, some really solid PRP teams. Uh, again, I'm <laughs> we met up with them when I was at Central Hard in the playoffs one year and they took us to the woodshed pretty good. So this is a, uh, a program that has been on a roller coaster ride, obviously playing in Louisville against the top teams in the state week in, week out. They can really have some rough years, but there are times when this PRP team gets it together. Coach Williams likes his chances as Cameron Smith makes the catch on the screen. He'll make about a three-yard gain. to will bring up about third and seven. Wembley's pass is complete Williams to Smith. Coach Williams loves his chances in the next couple of years of having one of those kinds of teams again. Gain of four, third and six. look out on the field here, and we have seen teams like John Hard and Meade County be completely overwhelmed by this North Arden Trojan team. Uh, I'm not seeing that. The physical abilities of this PRP team are obvious, that they have some talent, that they can line up, that they can go one-on-one -on -one and handle uh, All some sides, of the North Harden players. Well, Gain of five. the second offsides penalty now for the PRP defense is going to make this a short yarded situation here. Third and one. Third down and one now for the Trojans. 55 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So this PRP team is loaded with young talent. We'll try to continue to figure out who some of these young men are. But they are very impressive looking. And uh, there are some players out there. As the Bell Wright dances by one defender. Right on the carry. Another tackle. Finally brought down after about a five yard gain. Gain of five for a first down, Trojans. Tackle this time may have been P.J. Gerlock. I'm not sure if that was P.J. or not. It looked like 54, and there's no 54 on the roster. So uh, first and 10, Trojans. 
from their own 27 yard line looking to throw a screen pass. And that ball is incomplete. Wembley's pass is incomplete. Off to Lavelle right on the screen. Again, they're trying to take advantage. North Harden is trying to take advantage of this blitzing defense. One of the things you do to a blitzing defense is throw screens because those linebackers and the blitzers pretty well take themselves out of the play. They overrun the play as they're trying to get to the quarterback. So one strategy for beating the blitz is throwing screens. And right now they're just not completing those screen passes. Inside give on a draw play. Lavelle Wright breaking three tackles, running. Lavelle the Wright defender. on the carry. It's about a 14-yard carry, and Lavelle Wright's got gain another of Trojan first 14 down. for a first down. Trojans. You got struck. He ain't gonna tackle you again. So 14 seconds to go. Maybe just a play or two left in the quarter. Two receivers to each side. Wimberly screen again. This is middle screen to Marcus Harrison. Harris gets tripped up by one of his linemen there. Uh, they were Wimberly's in the pass same is complete to Harris. Accidentally, as they were again trying to set loss up the of two, second here. and twelve. Again, At the end of one, Trojans fourteen. Number fifty-seven. PRP zero. Cause a little bit of a disruption there in the play. So that is the end of the first quarter. Your home standing and undefeated North Harden Trojans 14 and the PRP Panthers nothing. This is an HCEC TV student production of Division of Harden County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Ryan Harris of Remax Premier Properties, Bluegrass Cellular, Etown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tune in weekly for rebroadcasts of all local HCEC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2 and Spectrum Communications on channel 184. And so we have one quarter in the books and the North Harden Trojans well on their way to what again, from all the research that uh, I talked with Coach Thompson before the game, all the research Coach Thompson has done from my memory, I moved here in 1976, lived in Radcliffe, went to North Harden, played at North Harden. My brother played at North Harden. I've seen and followed this program. I do not recall an undefeated regular season in the history of the North Harden Trojans. Uh, 1994, they had a great football team that made it to the semifinals. That was under coach Joe Jaggers with uh, Raymond McLaurin, the good running back, the great running back who went to uh, UK. They lost one or two regular season games prior to that deep playoff run. Oh, botched snap. It looked like Wimberley was not looking for the snap. So on a second and 13, the fumble goes right by, recovered by the Trojans. Fortunately, Lavelle Wright is paying attention and uh, goes and jumps on the football. It's going to bring up a third down. And, well, we're going to call Loss it of really 11. long. It's going to be about third and 24. 23, maybe 24 yards from their own 28-yard line. The Trojans need to get over midfield to get the first down. So two wide receivers to each side. The running back, Lavelle Wright, will empty the backfield and go to the left. He's going to help block on the edge, but did not make the block. 34 gets right by him on the blitz. Wimberly throwing that way down the field. Josh Moore is there. Touchdown, Trojans. Wow, Wimberly's folks. Wimberly's pass goes That is Manny Wimberly at his 30, best. And you might 40, get excited about the, 50, the 40, great receiver, Josh 30, Moore, making 20, a long touchdown 10, catch. 72 5, yards. 4, 3, 2, Wimberly. 1. Is standing Touchdown, on about the 24. Trojans. And he heaves that 72 ball. yards. Josh Wimberly. Moore catches it on about the four yard line. Give him the reason why Manny Wimberly six. is the starting quarterback for the North Harden Trojans is he's got what's called arm talent in the NFL. And he's got as much of it as anybody you're going to ever see in a high school uniform. Now, as a sophomore, he's, he's very inexperienced, prone to making some mistakes. Uh, he, he has uh, at times struggled. You noticed. On um, just the play before, Manny um, didn't see the ball. He wasn't looking. Uh, he, he either lost track of the snap count, was looking at something on the defense. Don't know what happened, but the ball go, went, the snap went right by him. Very next play. So that shows you some of the struggles of the young quarterback and what can happen. But that's why Manny Wimberley's on the football field right there. That is a ball that is thrown over 70 yards in the air. You don't see that in a high school football game, folks. Uh, I played quarterback in high school. Uh, I played uh, college quarterback. 
I think the furthest I ever threw a football just throwing the ball around was 68, 69 yards. And I guarantee you that was not in a game on the run to the left for a right-handed quarterback setting up and ripping one down the field. And oh, by the way, hitting Josh Moore in stride, that is one of the best throws. I kind of got excited there. And that's why, folks, you just don't see a play like that. And so if you're a casual fan out there watching tonight, um, I challenge you to find a throw that good on Saturdays for college games. I'm telling you, folks, on Sundays in pro football games, you're not going to see very many guys make a throw like that. That was, I'm here to tell you as an experienced quarterback, quarterback coach and coach, you don't see that kind of throw ever. That was very special. If you've got a button on your television where you can rewind, if there's any way you can go online and watch this game again, watch that play. That was a special football play by Manny Wimberley. I am just, I'm just amazed. By the way, they're still playing football, and I'm talking about the touchdown. But that was uh, that was a special football play, and the Trojans now with 11:08 to go have started to open this thing up, and it's 21 to nothing, North Harden Trojans. Uh, I, I can't wait till after the game to get to the field and have a talk with Manny about that throw. That is, you just don't know how special that is. I, I can't believe it. And the Maurice Soji showing you how special he is. It's a six-yard gain, but he just broke four tackles to do it, spinning off of Isaiah Beasley uh, and some of his uh, fantastic teammates. So Maurice Soja, again, uh, is a special football player, folks. You look out there on the field, and, and uh, you can really tell that kid is the real deal uh, by size and athleticism. And uh, he's, he's going to give his team a second down and four with a, an amazing six-yard run there. Clock continues to tick. There's motion across. Give us to Anderson straight ahead. He bounces off one defender. Again, he's got space, and... He's going to have a first down. Anderson, nice job by Anderson. Tackle by Parms and and so, you know, you see as the ball is given to Anderson, he did have to bounce off of one tackler. But the fact is they had given him some space by creating a little bit of movement on the left side of the line. And so Anderson takes advantage of a, a good job by that front five of the, uh, the offensive line. So the Panthers first and 10, almost to midfield at their own 49-yard line. Quick hitch thrown, intercepted right through the hands of number eight. I believe that's Reed who missed the ball. Elijah Reed, Patrick still running down the sideline, and it's going to be Soja at about the three or four-yard line to make the play. And so there was a trips formation to the right, a quick hitch by the middle receiver in the trips formation as um, – Several of the other receivers were running down the field to draw the uh, linebackers away. Ball thrown slightly high, but definitely a catchable ball right through Eli Elijah Reed's hands, and it's going to go right to the cornerback's hands. That's Ian Patrick, who's a phenomenal player on the outside. Patrick comes up with the interception, and he's going to take it well back. Well, there is, as there often is, a, uh, a blocking penalty, an illegal block, uh, block in the back by the Trojans on the return. So the ball, they'll start this drive at the 32-yard line and up 21 to nothing. Look to, as far as I'm concerned, put this ball game away early in the second quarter here. Trips formation into the boundary. They've got one-on-one -on -one out here. It is blitz man coverage, one-on-one -on -one to Moore. They're going to go to him. This ought to be easy, six points. And it's a great catch by Moore. Is he in the end zone? Touchdown, Trojans. Another great throw by Manny Wimberly. And Josh Moore showing you who he is by laying out full to go get that thing. Thirty-two yard touchdown pass. Wimberly to Moore, and Moore showing out, showing his talent, laying out for the football. It's a good throw. It's not like it's something he had to make a totally circus catch on, but uh, Josh Moore showing all his skills, laying out completely to go get that football for six points. So. Now with 9.40 remaining, as I mentioned, it looks like this game is on ice. Caden Logs to attack on the point. Good snap. It's Logs down and up. Good. Trojans, 28. Panthers, nothing. 
So what you saw there, again, blitz man coverage, no deep safeties. You can tell when there's going to be a big blitz and a man cover look when there's no safeties on the field. All the safeties have walked down to play man coverage on the, uh, on the slot receivers. And what you end up with, especially with the trips formation to the left, is one defender, one lone defender on the other side of the field. And that defender had the job of, of guarding Josh Moore. And he didn't really have a chance. Uh, Pre-snap, it was an easy look, easy decision, and a good throw and a great catch there by Wimberley and Moore. And so the, uh, the show, if you want to watch a great show, uh, you're getting a great show tonight by these North Harden Trojan players on both sides of the football. So with 9.40 to go, Caden Logsdon will ready to kick off, and every kick so far has been a low roller. So far, the PRP Panthers have done a great job fielding those low rollers, and they'll do it again here. The ball is this time bouncing around loose, but the, the Panthers will fall on it. They'll take over first and 10 on the right hash from their own 41-yard line. Inside give, handoff there, number 15. Got a lot of room. And again, these Panthers, the even air. though they're getting handled right now, and there is a flag down, it looks like this one's the probably going to come first. back. But again, you can see that was Clayton Helm that time on the carry. Actually, face mask on the Trojans. Face mask on the Trojans. I expected that to be a blocking face penalty. The the but the face mask foul will... Move the ball, as did the run by Clayton Helm, number 15 for the Panthers. Move it deep into Trojan territory. They were already at about the 49-yard line to start the drive on their own side of the 50. Now to the Trojan 30-yard line. So, again, threatening in Trojan territory. This is about the third time they've had the ball to the 30-yard line. They just haven't been able to do anything with it. This time the fake on the jet sweep, and Soja keeps. He breaks two tackles. He's still on his feet, steps out of bounds at about the 13 or 14-yard line. And a big gain for uh, Maurice Soja, who, again, has so much talent. This PRP Panther team loaded with talent. It's just young talent. And, you know, as anyone who's experienced high school football knows, when you're playing 14- and 15-year-old kids against 17- and 18-year-old kids, you're going to get your tail end handed to you, especially against a good team. So you've got a very talented PRP team that's just a little overmatched right now. But Soja making a big play there. And, again, they're, they're going to draw that very aggressive offside North Harden front off sides. And this is the first time I've seen in calling, a, I think, four games of the Trojans the first time I've seen somebody utilize the count to take this first aggressive five, front and use that aggressiveness against them. And so great job by the Panthers here using the snap count to slow down this, off, this defensive front. So now we see North Harden with their backs up against the wall in a man front. Give us the two Anderson, and he's going backwards. And that's going to be Oxendine cleaning up the play there. So a first and five Three, is going to turn five, into a second and long now. Looks like they're going to spot it at the 15-yard line. And so uh, it's going to bring up a second down and nine after the four-yard loss. And so, uh, again, they take advantage of the Trojan aggressiveness on that first opportunity. And then the second opportunity, that Trojan aggressiveness is in the backfield smacking Anthony Anderson in the mouth and knocking him back. So second and nine, Soja play action. He's going to keep... He's running with the football, running strong. Ball pops out late, but he's got about a three-yard gain. It'll probably bring up about a third and six or seven. Got to expect, folks, that this is four-down territory for the PRP Panthers. It's going to bring up a third down and seven from about the 12-yard line. We'll see what the Panthers have up their sleeve for a third down and seven call. Again, it's a straight man uh, defense, man cover look with a lot of backers and blitzers coming here. They're going to put the pressure. Soja on the keeper again, 
after he fakes the jet sweep, about a four or five yard gain. He'll be almost to the eight. It's gonna be somewhere spotted between the eight and nine yard line. That's gonna, it's gonna bring up about a fourth down and three, maybe a fourth and four. So it's a uh, big down for the Panthers here, 746 and counting in the second quarter, left in the second Georgia quarter. Fans. And we've got an official's timeout. timeout. Official. We've got an injury. We've got a man down on the field for the uh, for the Trojans. Uh, yeah, a couple of his teammates trying to help him to his feet. That's probably a bad idea. We've got the training crew coming onto the field to uh, make sure everything's okay. It's Octavius Oxendine, the big fella, is to his feet. They have helped him up. He is kind of slowly walking off the field. Looks like Octavius is going to be okay. I'm sure they'll check him out here before they go sending him back onto the field. This is an HCEC TV production. Hardin County is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. So fourth down and three, and on the, about the uh, seven or eight yard line, I thought it was between the eight and nine, it's probably squarely on the eight yard line. Two wide receivers to the left, and guess what? Jarrell Campbell lured offsides again. Offsides. Maurice Soja is gonna use the hard count there to get himself a free one, a free first down, and again, that is, I believe that is the fifth offsides call, and there have been two on the uh, Panther defense, but the fifth offsides call on this North Harden Trojan defensive front, and again, this has been something they've gotten away with all year. This is really the first time with this PRP Panther squad that they have been tested with differing snap counts. Fake to the jet sweep, fake to the running back and keep by Maurice Soja. He just gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a half a yard. He's at about the four yard line. It's gonna bring up second and goal from the four. Clock is rolling. Second and four. Sojin Anderson in the backfield. That's Helm reporting to the left side of the formation. It's a tight end, trips to the left. Motion across, fake there. It's gonna be Soja again. They're trying to go to the big quarterback. Maurice Soja, just not much there. He's Soja having to break tackles in the backfield and getting just past the line of scrimmage. Not much there, and the Trojans doing a great job. Boy, they're making this really difficult on Maurice Soja to try to get it into the end zone, this stingy front for the Trojans. I will say this, I mentioned last week that I don't know how anybody ever scores on this Trojan defense as good as they are. Well, we've seen how, and that's a few mistakes on some key downs can give you an opportunity. And so let's see if the Panthers can take advantage of this opportunity. Third and goal from the three yard line. It's gonna be a play action rollout look, trying to get it to number eight, just short on the throw. A little bootleg action from Maurice Soja. He's trying to get it to Elijah Reed, number eight, and, and just slightly outside and low, and Reed couldn't come up with it. It was actually a good idea to throw it low and away. You don't want to give an opportunity for a Trojan interception there. You'll, you'll take a chance that your receiver can go down and get it, but uh, even though he's unable to, it gives you one more opportunity. So fourth down and three. Let's see what Coach Williams comes up with. He's got two receivers to each side, but they are tight. It's a squeezed formation. Little fake there. Throw inside, and it's intercepted on about the one yard line by Jordan Lovett. Another interception for the free safety. One of the leading interceptors in the state of Kentucky. I'm not sure if that's nine or 10 for Lovett. I can look at my statistics here, but Jordan Lovett making another play, this time on fourth and three as the Panthers were threatening. They faked, so it was a play action look. They had a fade route and a slant route to the left. They went to the slant route and it was so crowded in there. I don't know how he thought he was going to get the football in there. But Jordan Lovett, I believe that is his ninth interception on the season. That guy has been phenomenal. Wimberly looking deep. 
He's got Harris, and it's completed to about the 47-yard line, a 46-yard gain. And so off of the one-yard line, the Trojans looking for the big play. They were looking for 99 yards, I think. But it's a big reception to Marcus Harris, number eight. And as soon as your attention is drawn to Josh Moore, who is the phenomenal number 80 receiver for the Trojans, they're going to beat you down the other side with Marcus Harris. So Harris picks up a big gain there. And so first and 10, give inside to right. He breaks a tackle. He had some space, got a crease. He's got four or five guys on. That's a good 22 or three yard gain there for Lavelle Wright. So Lavelle Wright over 1,000 yards on the season, uh, even last week, continuing to add to that. The 1,000 yard rusher. Uh, making a big play, and uh, with 5.14 to go, they're now deep in Panther territory, starting at their own one, now at the Panther 34-yard uh, line, and there we go. As soon as you vary a snap count, both of these teams so aggressive that they're jumping uh, early, and so uh, that'll be a five-yard penalty. The Trojans will have first down and five now. At about the 28 or 29 yard line of the PRP Panthers. I'm going to call it the 29. First and five. Two receivers to each side off the left hash. Lavelle Wright is to the left of Manny Wimberly. One deep safety man coverage underneath. They're throwing the screen to Josh Moore. Great tackle. Beautiful play. Number 18 there to make that, uh, make that play. Uh, when it looked like. Uh, Josh Moore may score. Again, that is Nicholas Manise. And again, Manise is the one who got called on the um, uh, pass interference call earlier on the first drive for the Trojans. This time, Manise making a great play. Manise, again, a sophomore, one of the youngsters that uh, Coach Williams was talking about in the pregame. All these young kids that he's got out on the field. There's Lavelle Wright. A lot of guys there. Uh, to make that play, no not gain, much doing, one. no gain there. Big number 59, Jeremiah Brown on the play. He is a senior, so 59 getting there to make the play. Trojans now with a third and short after that first and five because of the offsides penalty, the screen pass and the run. Uh, not enough to get the five yards needed. So third and one from the 24-yard line. It's a man look here. It is a man-free look, and Coach uh, is going to call timeout because they're running out of time. I'm sure he was trying to make a check. He probably wanted to go ahead and take advantage of the man cover and go ahead and try to throw the ball into the end zone. It sounds kind of silly on a third and one. Like, why wouldn't you just give the ball to your big running back on third and one? Well, because the blitz was coming. They had more than they could block there. They've got five linemen uh, with four wide receivers. The other team's bringing five or six. You can't block them all. And so there was a good chance that if they went ahead and gave the ball to Lavelle there, it was going to be a bad play. Not to say that Lavelle Wright couldn't break a tackle and still get a first down. But coach uh, against a man cover look, why not take your shot again because you, uh, you're having a lot of success throwing the ball down the field. Wimberly to Moore, and so he had Moore over here on the right side. I'm, I'm sure Coach was trying to set up that opportunity. Again, a quick thanks to our sponsors. I'll mention Physical Therapy Associates. The more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgeville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville online at physicaltherapyky.com. So, Let's try it again, rewind. Now we've got a uh, tight bunch to the left, a trips look. Wimberly, the snap is high. He can't handle it. It's going to go way back. So third and one is going to become fourth and 17 in a hurry. And so you continue to see. Now that one was not Wimberly's fault. Certainly the ball was high. Could have handled it. It was a tough one, that's for sure. There's no, uh, no uh, shame on him in not being able to handle that bad snap. But the fact is... We continue to see issues in the center QB snap and handle. One of them, Wimberly, not paying attention that time. Poor snap. So we've seen a number of issues in this. And now 
on the punt team, there have been snap issues, uh, both in the snap and in the catch. So the Trojans trying to clean that up. That's something they're going to have to clean up as they move into the playoffs. The snap is there. White is going to get it away. A good rush, but he's able to get that away. Another good kick by White. Fielded at about the two-yard line. Didn't look like the smartest play I've ever seen, but a good return. Number 15, that's Helm, and he's hit out of bounds. Yeah, Ian Patrick very late, out of bounds, smacking at the ball, trying to All knock that loose, and uh, he gets away with one there as far as I'm concerned. So the, uh, the Panthers will take over from their own 20-yard line. It is the uh, left hash that they'll be starting from, and so the uh, Panther defense holds in that case due to, again, another mistake. And so uh, the mistakes will pile up and will hurt you from time to time. Again, we've got a man cover look here. Blitz coming. Soja with trips formation to his right. Tight end to his left. Motion across. He's going to look down the field. The blitz is coming. Vesey Lilo applying the pressure. Good throw and catch. And so the catch is made off the right side there. Soldier's pass is complete. That catch Six. made by number 88. That's Al Salman. Fahid, I believe. Al Salman is the uh, number 88 who just made the play on that catch. So that'll bring up a second down and four on the six yard pass gain. Good run. It's Anderson with the football. They had a nice crease. He breaks a Anderson tackle, makes a great carry. cut. And that's going to be about a 15 yard run. And so with 149 to go, uh, PRP uh, getting out of the shadow of their end zone uh, up to the four, their own 41-yard line. So Panthers have not lacked the ability to move the football. They've looked a lot better than a number. They look a lot better offensively than what I saw Central Harden look last week. Central Harden has one of the leading offenses in the state. Throw there by Soja a little high that time. Trying to get the ball. May have been number eight, Elijah Reed. It was the intended target. It was a, a, sh a skinny post a little further down the field than what you would normally see and a little more vertical than what you would see on a slant route. So, But the ball just well overthrown, you know, five, six feet over the head of Reed. So second down and ten, but the clock does stop on an incomplete pass under center, but no backs in the backfield. Quick screen out. It's going to be a double pass. Number five is going to throw the ball up to Helm, and Ian Patrick's there to make the interception. That's at least his second on the game. I think it's the fourth interception for the Trojans. Patrick's still on his feet. He's going to take it Soldier deep. Soja there to make the tackle. There is a flag down. Back further again on the return. They're going to spot this at the 10, so it'll be first down and goal on the 10-yard line unless they bring this back further, which it looks like they will. We have a holding call on the return. So this is something that is fairly common when you get defensive players who are now turned to offense and, and meant to block. You often see them get a little overly aggressive. Holding calls, blocks in the back will often occur on those kinds of returns, but it um, seems to be occurring on every opportunity that the Trojans have. I'm sure their defense would love to get a, get a score, but uh, they're not going to do it that way. So 115 to go, 28 to nothing, starting at the 39-yard line of the Panthers. Wimberley will take the snap. Looking down the field on first down, it's Harris. He's thrown over his outside shoulder, just a hair short and good defensive play. That time, number 27, who's Deshaun Barkley making the play. So Barkley is able to uh, hold up defensively in the man-to-man -man cover look. Again, the Trojans looking to strike quickly after the turnover. You've got a man look on the uh, left side of the field here. Again, if they want it, they've got a crossing route coming. It's a mesh route, and he was looking for Ramaj Adams on the right side, but he had Cameron Smith to his left on the, on the mesh route. The mesh route is the two inside receivers 
running a crossing look uh, uh, across the field. And that time, uh, probably a poor choice. Went to the wrong receiver. Should have been Smith coming open on the other side of the field, wide open on the wide side. Two receivers to each side on third and long. Third down and 10 yards to go. And the Trojans will jump off sides. Left guard, number 58, jumps early. Five, third and 15. <laughs> so with 103 to go, the Trojans will find themselves in familiar territory, which is a third and long, whether it's penalty errors, whether it's good plays by the Panther defense or mishandled snaps. This is not a situation that uh, you like to be in, but the Trojans have been in third and long a lot this evening. Wimberley looking down the field, looking for an opening. He has Josh Moore down the middle, but he's just running for his life right now, trying to get away. He finds Lavelle Wright as he's being tackled. Lavelle Wright stiff-arming a man and getting down the field. Looked like Wright was face masked, but there's no flag out. Picked it up. Are you kidding me? Third and 15. They pick it up again. Uh, the Trojans get 16 yards on third and 15. And um, they keep putting themselves in bad spots, and they keep coming through in those kind of spots. So at 28 to nothing with 49 seconds to go, they're going to have another opportunity here from the 25-yard line. The clock is ticking. Wimberly looking down the field again. Trying to find somebody open. Not a lot going on down the field. Not a lot happening with the receivers. They kind of were covered and they stopped. It's never a good sign. Wimberly's got to scramble and Wimberly take what there. he can get smartly out of bounds to stop the clock. And so a short gain of about Eight three yards. Two, More importantly, eight. the clock is stopped at 32 seconds remaining in the half. From the 22, it looks like the tw maybe the 23-yard line of the PRP Panthers. And so he's got two receivers to his left as Wimberly, Smith, and Moore to his right. Lavelle Wright looking to block and release. Out and up route. He's got an open receiver. I believe that is Ramaj Adams, number six. Is that six? Ramaj Adams on an out and up. So they run a curl route from the outside receiver. Adams from his slot position runs an out and up. I'm telling you, if they're going to continue to play man cover, PRP that is, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see straight fly routes, uh, straight post routes that they can't cover, and then some slightly more tricky routes, like a wheel route, or which is what that basically was, or the out and up kind of route. And they're not going to be able to cover that. So up 34 nothing, another fumbled snap, another mess, and the play is dead. PRP is going to pick that up and run, but you can't, you can't run with an extra point. Number 34 is very upset that they can't run with the football, but you can't get any points um, when you're on defense. That's only in college and pros where you can pick up uh, an extra point and go score two points with it. The play is dead when the defense touches that, it's down at that point. So up 34 to nothing, the Trojans, you'd wonder, why in the world are you going for two up 34 to nothing? But it totally makes sense because 36 points is the magic number for a running clock. And so um, whether it's for their own benefit to get off the field tonight or whether it's for the benefit of the PRP Panthers um, mercy rule, as you might have it, uh, the Trojans were trying to get to that running clock, that 36-point margin that would have created a running clock for this second half. So with 26 seconds remaining, it's the North Harden Trojans 34, the PRP Panthers nothing. And Caden Logsdon will line it up this time, did not line up to kick on the extra point because, again, the Trojans went for two. Logsdon, left foot, he's going to bounce the ball. Looks like someone on the kickoff team got to the ball before Caden Logsdon, the kicker, did. So uh, they'll move it back five yards and, and do it again. Panthers will be required to recover this bouncing kick that they've been seeing all night. They've done a great job doing that so far. They've had good field position. They've actually been able to move the ball a number of times into Trojan territory. But as soon as they get that momentum, 
that uh, phenomenal Trojan defense stiffens up and does not allow points. So logs in again, lining it up. This time a line drive, not a runner. 15 Helms will take the ball and he'll be tackled after about a short 10 yard return. They'll start at the 28 yard line. Their own 28, the PRP Panthers, with 21 seconds to go and in the half. Again, our sponsors include Eton Exterminating. 737-6900 online at mugabug.com. Bluegrass Cellular offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. So Soja with just a few seconds remaining, 21 seconds, has trips to the right. He's looking, oh my goodness, he is looking to his right to set up a quarterback the draw. Unfortunately, Jarrell Campbell and company an all-out blitz by the Trojans there had uh, six people coming in pressure, and three of them got to the quarterback before he could turn his head and turn it upfield. At the end of the half, Trojans, 34. PRP. Time after Zero. that running play, we'll call it, has run out. And so we have a halftime score, the North Harden Trojans, 34, PRP Panthers, Zero. We'll be back for second half action in about 15 minutes. We'll see you then. Hi, my name is Dale Mings, and welcome to HCC TV live sports coverage. We want to take a few moments right now to recognize one of our longtime sponsors with our live sports coverage, Bluegrass Cellular. Well, we started back in 1989, just offering your basic service to our customers, and uh, eventually in 1998, we started doing our first digital service, providing our first digital service, and then later, in 2005, we launched our first smartphone service. And ever since then, we've been adding to our product portfolio, enhancing the services. And uh, now we even have mobile services as well as a number of uh, fleet digital services for our business customers. Well, the future is pretty bright. Uh, right now, we continue, as I mentioned, to enhance our portfolio. Uh, so we have in-vehicle uh, internet services that we can provide to families as they travel uh, throughout the holidays. Uh, we have our fleet services where you can monitor and manage how your vehicles are being used uh, if you're a business customer of ours. So uh, it looks pretty bright. We're not just uh, only focusing on the mobile handheld device. So we can even service your internet, provide your internet service in your home. Well, we have a core employee group of approximately 400 employees. But uh, more importantly to us, not only do we have our employees that are directly employed by our organization, but we support well over 125 vendors. So each of those vendors have their own set of employees, and they're all part of the Bluegrass family. So it's your community expanded. It's our business expanded. So we're completely entrenched, and we're fully invested in, in where we are. I, I tell you what, I, what I'm really excited about is when we talk about being local, oftentimes organizations, we picture a local as a place, right? My organization is located in Elizabeth town that's that's a specific area where you are here what we do is we like to do local so local as a verb and action word so just the other day we were very fortunate enough to be involved uh, in a, a shelter clean out uh, we cleaned the grills and tables and walls of a community shelter so they were able to uh, pass their inspection this wasn't done on the weekend where employees just do when they when they feel like they would be fit their schedule this was actually done during the day the company fully supported that, fully supported our, org our organization's uh, team members to go out to the facility and do work there. Um, beyond that, uh, a lot of times when you hear the word local or local involvement, you may think of an organization of our size would simply write a check or that's how we are involved. 
But once again, I mentioned that we do local. So uh, we're actually involved in organizations such as uh, uh, Helping Hands and Battle for the Bluegrass, where we're providing funds for schools, and we're actively involved. So uh, it's, it's, that's how we view our local involvement. Well, right now, we are really excited about our Wi-Fi service, so uh, you can have your internet in your home in areas where uh, previously some of the landline providers were unable to provide you with internet service. Now you can come to Bluegrass Cellular and we can provide you with internet service in your home. Uh, even if you're in an extremely rural area, uh, you can be connected uh, digitally to the rest of the world. Uh, on top of that, uh, as I mentioned, we have our uh, fleet services. So if you own a business, uh, our internet service uh, will allow you to track your, your vehicles, or allow you to do business on the move and on the go. So your employees, particularly if you have a sales organization, they're no longer tethered to a cubicle or to an office. Uh, there's always work to be done, and when you're mobile, and when you're mobily doing work, uh, then you're gonna be extremely more productive. And that's all due to some of the products that we're offering. Well, you can walk into one of our retail locations. We have over 35 located throughout Central Kentucky. So uh, we're in a town near you. Uh, we can also find us on bluegrasscellular.com. Thank you for taking a few moments to learn about one of our uh, longtime sponsors here at HCC-TV. Um, and we just want to thank Bluegrass Cellular once again for supporting our students and providing this uh, wonderful service. Now let's get back to the ball game. Hi, I'm Dale Mings. Welcome to HCEC TV live sports coverage. Uh, now we're here again today in our studios talking to one of our longtime sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom. And we have Don McMahon with us today to tell us a little bit more about Brandenburg. Welcome, Don. How are you doing? Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, Don, tell us a little bit about um, Brandenburg Telecom, kind of its history and so forth. Yeah, uh, Brandenburg Telecom has been in this area um, since 65, for 65 years. Uh, mm -hmm. We started off in Radcliffe, mm -hmm. and then we've branched out from there. So um, in E-Town, we've probably been offering service in E-Town about almost, it's probably about 18 to 20 years almost um, for service in E-Town. So um, we have all the cities in Hardin County. So we've, we've been here a little while. Now I used to live in Meade County, and so I know that Brandenburg kind of started out as one of those small town telephone companies. That's where we first started, and uh, yeah. we decided to branch out from there, so yep. And it's, you know, I think one of the things that's always intrigued me was the fact that you guys have been really innovative. And uh, again, you know, that small town telephone company, but yet you guys have brought the cutting edge technology to our area. And I, I think you continue to do that. Yeah, um, fiber service is a big deal. I'm sure everybody's heard of fiber service from, mainly from Google, you know, bringing it mm -hmm. to uh, major cities throughout the U.S. So uh, we started out in Meade County building fiber service, and we have most of it built out. It's still going, but uh, recently we've got a um, we're able to offer fiber in the county of uh, Hardin County, mm -hmm. whereas we used to be in the cities. Now we're in the cities with fiber and the county. So the county is getting built out slowly but surely. We have two crews going right now, so um, hopefully we'll, we'll get it out. We'll, we'll get it out built eventually. I know that's good news for a lot of folks like me. I live way out there in the boonies, and yeah. right now we don't have a whole lot of options. Yeah, right now uh, with today's technology, you have wireless devices, you have 4K TVs, mm -hmm. so that demands a lot of bandwidth. And with fiber service, you can get up to one gig at your home, so that's that's huge. I mean, for a little community like this, which E Town's getting bigger and bigger every day, I know that. So um, it's a it's a really good uh, product to have. So I guess what we need to tell people is stay tuned. It's coming. Definitely. You know. um, when we do open a new fiber area, we, uh, we go door to door. So we'll hang a bag on your door, mm -hmm. and then we'll, uh, that, that'll let you know that fiber is ready. And we also uh, do some advertising in the news enterprise, and we put all the addresses in the, um, that's available. So you can check that out, too. Well, now, if people wanted to know, for instance, uh, are they in an area where they already have Brandenburg available to them, you know, how can they find out about what's available, what services you offer? Yeah, definitely give us a call um, uh, at our office. We have a new uh, office in E-Town on 62. Mm -hmm. um, phone number is 270-982-4466, and uh, mm -hmm. anybody can tell you uh, what we do. We do TV, phone, Internet, security, so um, they can get any information from the office. Just call your local office. So the, the new office kind of took the place of the one that was downtown on Dixie. Yeah, we used to be in, uh, on Dixie Highway. We shared a yeah. um, space with West Point Bank, but we've 
we've grown bigger and we have bigger plans, so we have got to spread it out a little bit. So. It's I think it's kind of neat how you've you've kind of kept that um, architectural style from the office in Brandenburg. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's easy enough uh, structure to build, so I guess we uh, I like it. So I know when they were building that when I was living in Meade County and I watched that one build there in Brandenburg, and I thought. Is that going to be a church building? Is all a lot that of stained glass, that. you know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say that. It's a, definitely a big steeple. So but it's it's pretty the way you turn the different colored lights on at yeah. different times and things. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. All right. Well, um, here's obviously you guys have been supporting high school sports by being a sponsor of our live coverage, um, and that's been going on for quite a while. So why do you think that's uh, why has Brandenburg gotten involved that way? Well, we're a like I said, we're a local company, so the community is important to us. Um, mm -hmm. We want to give um, all of our customers, you know, the best services and uh, conveniences. So, you know, a lot of people, if they can't make the game, they can go to Channel 1 and watch it. We play a lot of replays, so if you missed it, you can go back and catch it. Um, we also um, are involved in the high school, like a co-op program. So mm -hmm. um, as much as we can interact with the high schools and the high school kids, the better for us because, you know, maybe they'll work for us one day. Mm -hmm. So. We want to definitely keep that relationship um, going. So you mentioned co-op program. Is that a way for students to learn more about technology? Uh, yeah, we uh, our co-op program. They can work in the office. They mm -hmm. can do. They can you know slowly learn and um, just get a better knowledge of what we do. Wow, that's mm -hmm. awesome because you know that's something that Hardin County Schools is big in right now is getting kids ready to work. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's that's huge uh, lately. You know. Um, EC, even the um, college is doing that through, mm -hmm. through um, ECTC. TC, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to remember that day when it changed yeah. a few years ago. But yeah. yeah. Well, um, and we really appreciate all that you do for us. And um, folks, there's a lot of things here in Hardin County we would not be able to do if it wasn't for Brandenburg Telecom uh, basically backing us up. And so we really appreciate all that you do. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Right. Now we're going to get back to that ball game. Welcome back from our HCEC TV Live Sports. I'm here with one of our outstanding sports sponsors. They've been with us for many, many years. It's E-Town Exterminating, and joining me is Sean Rich, and he is the CEO mm -hmm. of E-Town Exter Exterminating. You all just celebrated a huge milestone just recently. Talk about that, Sean. Yes, uh, July 1976 was when my father, Roy Rich, started our company. And uh, this year, we, we celebrated our, uh, our 40th anniversary. In doing so, we had a meal out at the Freeman Lake, and we invited a lot of people in the community, and we had a big celebration. Now, um, for those that may not know, what are all the services that E-Town Exterminating provides? Well, we have three different divisions. We have pest control, termite, and mold management. In pest control, we do we have monthly services, we have uh, bi-monthly and quarterly, and we can even do just a one-time service if that's what the customer wants. And in the general pest, we take care of like crickets, spiders, ants, etc. And then we also have bed bug services, which is a different type of service. And then in termite, we have liquid barrier services. And then our popular service is Centricon Colony Elimination System. And that's where we put the green stations around the house. And it has a material inside of it that the t termites will feed off of. And they take that insect gro growth regulator back to the colony and it'll eliminate the colony. And then the mold management service, we have a monthly service for that. I was going to say moles are the, the death of many people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. What do you think is the key to your success at E-Town Exterminating? I, I think our huge success is we put the customer first, we provide a very good service, and then also we give back to the community. And I think that's been three really key, key elements of our success. So for 40 years, you started with how many people, how many employees did Roy have? We started with three employees, and now we employ 29. That's a great, great Im uh, economic impact for our community, yes. too. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, why do you feel it's important to be a community sponsor? 
Well, just, just like uh, high school athletics, we see a need in these programs. Uh, with, with my children participating in varsity sports, I know, and also a booster rep for five, five years, I know that there's not a lot of money that's there for those kids. And we want to make this a special moment for them. Every kid should be able to go in and have good, good equipment and be able to travel and go to a lot of different events. And we want to be able to be a part of that. Now, um, earlier we were talking about some of your sports memories. Right? Mm -hmm. You were an athlete and uh, talk about those things. I mean, how important it is to see the fans, to be appreciated and how, how that encourages you. Well, I, I at E-Town, or at E-Town High School, I ran cross country, I ran track, and also I ran, or, and I played basketball. So I know the difference between a uh, individual sport and a non-revenue sport, and also where we have a lot of fans. And so looking at what I went through and all the joy that I had and looking back and and all the different players and athletes that I uh, was able to uh, play with, I see those special bonds that I still have here today. And so I feel like that when you play for your school and you have fellow student athletes that play us alongside of you, you're gonna have those special relationships. Well, I know it really does support us. Your sponsorship without that and without the other sponsors on HCC TV Live Sports, we couldn't do our 80 events a year. Right. And, and I really do think it, it means a lot to those athletes. And, and I appreciate you and, and HCEC TV and Brainberg Telecom for allowing us to go along with this ride because we, we feel like this is a unique opportunity for student athletes to be on live TV and allowing the viewers out there to see these girls and boys to be able to go out and, and play for their, for their schools. And I remember years ago when Brandenburg Telecom came to me about, about a sponsorship on this, I was like, sign me up, mm -hmm. because we, we wanted to give back that way. I was gonna say, it just it has so, so much impact. I'll have uh, parents tell me that their grandparents were able to watch it and, uh, you know, that lived out of state. Of course, we have a, a strong military, so, so therefore, uh, you know, some of them can watch it, you know, in a distance. And so it really does mean a lot to the community. So I really want to, first off, I want to appreciate you for doing that. Well, thank you very much. Now, besides Elizabethtown, you're not just E-Town exterminating. No. <laughs> We, we cover eight different counties, but our core emphasis first is Hardin County and then LaRue and Meade County. Awesome. And, uh, and it, again, if someone would like to get in touch with you and your services, how can they do that? Well, they can call us directly at 270-737-6900, or they can visit our website at www.mugabug.com. I say that's an easy moniker to remember, that mugabug.com. Yes. <laughs> um, when uh, individuals call you, the other nice thing is they actually speak to a person. Yes, we <laughs> have uh, three lovely ladies that answer our phones at E-Town Exterminating, and, and they'll take care of your needs. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Sean, for joining us. And we want to thank all of our live sports sponsors for bringing HCEC TV and Brandenburg Telecom's live sports coverage. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you again, Sean. Well, thank you very much. Welcome back to North Harden High School Trojan Field for the second half of action where the Trojans are leading 34 to nothing and the big news tonight is that the undefeated regular season looks like it's pretty well been wrapped up by the Trojans in the first half with a 34 to nothing lead history in the making we know um, from our sources including coach Thompson and myself from uh, being a player here in the 80s my brother played in the early 80s me in the late 80s um, that we believe this is the first 10-0 regular season in at least 35 years. Now, we do have 
North Harden Hall of Fame royalty in the house tonight. Uh, former player from the early 70s, Kelly Kirchbaum, is in attendance tonight. He came here to watch this undefeated Trojan team play tonight. Kelly Kirchbaum played on the 74 squad, and it was believed that that was the last time there was an undefeated regular season. Coach Thompson talking to Kelly Kirchbaum today. Uh, Kirchbaum didn't remember it that way. He thought they had had a loss, that they were an 8-1 squad. And so, to be honest with you, uh, going back any further than that into the 60s, uh, I don't have the records. Coach Thompson didn't have the records. And, and from what we could tell, this is the first time. And so I've seen some really good, I mentioned in the first half, that 94 squad with Raymond McLaren, who ended up being a really good running back for the UK Wildcats. That squad had lost a regular season game or two before they made their run to the state semifinals. My brother's team in 83, made a run into the semifinals, but they had lost a couple games. I know at the hands of the Fort Knox Eagles, who at the time were the state champion, defending state champions and state champions that As year. As we begin the third quarter, PRP will receive. And so they were not undefeated. They were beaten in the semifinals by the Mark Higgs uh, led Owensboro team, Mark Higgs of UK Wildcat fame as well. And so we can't recall, we cannot uh, note some of you folks who've been around even longer than I may have information concerning this. If you do, phenomenal. I'd love to know. But uh, as far as myself and Coach Thompson, this is the first undefeated regular season squad in North Harden history. I'd love to talk to my old coach, Charlie Lynch. I know he was one of the first quarterbacks here in the 60s for North Harden. I'm not sure if his squad ever accomplished the feat. But this is historical, folks. Watching this North Harden Trojan squad go where, from what we can determine, no other North Harden squad has done. And we know for sure it's been 34 to 35 years at least since this has happened. Here, so, he recovers the onside uh, kick congratulations the to Coach line. Thompson. Well, I'm going to give them congratulations even though we have a half of football left to play. At 34 to nothing, the question is not will they win tonight, but will they get to the running clock? When will they get to the running clock? And we'll see what the Panthers have here. I talked a lot in the first half about this young Panther squad that I really expect and their coach, Coach Williams, expects to be a very competitive, very good squad in a very difficult district in a year or two. Again, their freshmore, sophomore and freshman, sophomore and freshman mix team was 8-2 and two this year. And so uh, there's a lot of good football players on the field. It's just 14, 15-year-old good football players playing against really good 17- and 18-year-old football players. And, and that's what you can see right now. For loss, Coach Williams yards. starting several freshmen, Second many sophomores, just a few seniors on the squad that are big contributors to what's going on. So at second and 12 here, Maurice Soja, number one quarterback for the Panthers, will try to mount some sort of attack here. Looks like a few folks in the game are playing a straight man coverage look are the, are the Trojans, and they're going to bring the heat. And again, it's Anderson Beasley on the carry. and Campbell in on the stop. Gain of as three, Anthony third and Anderson nine. picks up several yards to get back past the original line of scrimmage. They'll bring up a third down and nine. Again, a circumstance, a third and long that these PRP Panthers have been accustomed to for most of the evening. As all of you viewers here in Hardin County know, the winter time has hit had a couple of temperatures in the 20s. It's about 37, 36 degrees outside. I'm in a nice warm booth right now enjoying the football game, as you are at home enjoying that as well. Soja looking down the field, nothing there. He's going to be sacked as, again, that front seven Soldier is just is applying a ton of pressure. This time it's Vesey Lilo, 43, and getting to the quarterback. Fourth down and 13 for PRP. So that loss of five on the play, or loss of four will bring, oh my, rainbow snap on the punt is handled and kicked by the punter. 
And it'll be about Trojans will take over first and 10 to 39 yard line. Eight yard punt, and the Trojans will have great field position starting from their left hash on their own 39 yard line, just short of the 40 with 9.54 to go in the third quarter. And Manny Wimberly and Lavelle Wright will be in the backfield to start this second half. First and 10, again from their own 39 yard line. Give to Lavelle Wright on a delay handoff. He's going to pick up about three, maybe right four, actually. On the carry. To about the 43-yard line. So a four-yard game will bring it a second four, down and second six. And six. As I mentioned before, the Trojan Hall of Fame hero, Kelly Kirchbaum in attendance tonight, a former NFL player for the New York Jets. Again, here to see this uh, historic situation uh, unfolding here. Not really again challenged tonight, but a phenomenal game last week. A seven to nothing win over the, at the time, undefeated Central Harden Bruins as well. And it's Manny deep again. This one may be slightly overthrown and just Early's out of the reach. It looked like he was going for Marcus Harris again at the left Harris. side. So Third that one six. just a little bit out of his grasp. We've seen Wimberly make some really good downfield throws tonight to both Harris and Josh Moore. And so this time, just a little too much on it, bringing up a third down and six as no gain on, on the incomplete pass. We'll bring up again another third down, this time middle yardage, not long yardage. Two receivers to each side. Blitz coming and a lot of pressure on Wimberly. He's going to be sacked for a huge loss. That is Wimberly about a 16-yard loss on the play. Um, so PRP again bringing the heat. Hutchison on the sack. Number 50 and number 34 on the play there. White on the punt. Number 50 is Michael Compton as he was there. Assisting his teammate, number 34, Milam, uh, Milam Malone. A bad punt snap again, just barely kicked away by Alex White, well over his head. He had to track back to go get that. And the ball is going to get up to the First North Harden 45-yard line where PRP will take over, uh, actually at, their, at the Trojan 46-yard line. So you know, one of the things uh, last week, again, that was an epic game. I know 7 to nothing doesn't sound like the most exciting thing ever, but that was just an epic game, a defensive battle. The Trojans and the Bruins both undefeated, going at it last week. And one of the things that uh, we talked about on that broadcast and that the coaches from Central Harden talked about was the fact that uh, that uh, North Harden punt team struggles in the uh, snap, catch, and kick aspects and the protection aspects. So this pass and is they were flawless Anderson. against Central Harden. Noah Gettler from Central Harden had several opportunities. He was a key factor rushing the punter. Tackled by several trophies. barely missing several of those uh, attempts at blocking a punt, blocking an Alex White punt. But every uh, snap was solid. Second and 15 Maybe not for great, PRP. Didn't get there quickly. Solid and Alex White catch and kick. Uh, was really solid last week. That has not been the case tonight. Uh, that issue has reared its ugly head again this week uh, where they've had several uh, difficulties. Another big loss. Uh, this is going to be interesting. The call offsides on North Harden. Offsides on the hard Trojans. count by Maurice Sojin again that what was second and 15 and will five. now be second and, ten. A second and 10. So they'll get back the five yards they lost on first down. The reason why I did not like that call is Maurice Soja is throwing his hands out like he's going to accept the snap, and that jerking motion could really be called against him. The hard count with the voice is one thing. He's doing it again right there. Uh, the snap will be th will be there this time just so after that throw to 15 Simpson to Helms, on the, the intended receiver. Third and 10. And it's just off the hands of Helms. It was out in front a little bit. Soja hasn't been super accurate this evening. He's been pretty good in the run game, not super accurate in the passing game. He's made a few good throws, but uh, he's struggled with his accuracy this evening. 
Trips formation on third down and 10 is out to the left here. It's a bunch to the left. Not a tight bunch, but wide. So just going to take the snap. He's going to give to Anderson on third and 10. Unfortunately for Anderson, that's Darren Green who is right there Anderson to, to the wrap carry, him up tackled behind the right line at the line of scrimmage. And so Green. it'll bring up fourth down and 10. And Loss of one, it looks like they'll continue to trade punts uh, here early in the third quarter. Again, 654 and counting. So the Panthers line up in punt formation. The snap is there. It's a weak punt. It's just barely away this time again. Handled by Quayshawn Davis, and he's got some room. If he can get the corner, makes one man miss, just steps out of bounds as he was run Quayshawn out of bounds Davis. by number seven there. On the return. Number seven is Miles Burbridge. Judges take over first and, and ten. So Miles Burbridge is able to get him knocked out of bounds. Burbridge is a very big, good-looking kid. At the 48. Uh, senior wide receiver and safety. He hasn't played on the offensive side. He's been playing on the defensive side at that safety spot. But it'll be Trojan football, and uh, it's with a good return by Quayshawn Davis. It will be out to the 48-yard line of the Trojans. They'll take over there. Deep motion by Cameron Smith to the left, looking up the right side. He had Josh Moore. Would have had a, probably a, an opportunity play. for a touchdown throw. By but Mike. the pressure by number 57 gets to uh, Wimberley before he can throw the ball. That's 57, Jerry Mack. Mack is a sophomore, Loss again, another one of those talented young players Second, that Coach Williams is looking to develop. And so Mack gets to the quarterback and makes the sack. Wait a minute. It's like I'm a poet. Mack gets to the quarterback and gets the sack. Okay. Second and 16. Quick throw on the bubble screen to Lavelle Wright. And Wright's going to pick up about five right. yards, Game almost five. back to the original line third of scrimmage. It's going to bring up a third down and 11, 536 and counting. And as crazy as this sounds, the Trojans have been at their most dangerous in these third down and long situations. We've seen them convert and even more in some of these big situations on third and long calls. Josh Moore flanking wide to the right. Cameron Smith just inside of him in the slot. Wimberly looking to his left to Harris, though. He's under a ton of pressure again. It's Malone, 34, on the sack. The ball is loose. Fumble. And the Panthers are saying they have it, and the officials agree. PRP recovers. Panthers have knocked the ball loose. And again, the turnover bug, which because they're so good defensively, did not hurt them last week. But three turnovers by the Trojans in the first half in the big game against the Bruins really stifled their offense. And so uh, there have been, an, uh, with center QB issues, interception issues, and fumble issues, there have been some, there have been some turnover problems for the Trojans. So uh, another turnover here, and we'll see if the uh, defense can hold up the mistake from the offense here. Give is to Anderson around the left side on the jet sweep. Anderson is knocked all Anderson the way out on the onto carry. the track. Gain of six. A good uh, gain on the jet sweep. Down to the Trojan 38 yard line, almost the 38. And so it's going to bring up a second down and maybe four yards. They need to get to almost the 29 yard line for a first down with 5.54. The clock is stopped because of the out of bounds there. Tight end left, trips right, motion coming across. Two hitch routes over to the side and the throw and catch made, but so just for a yard complete. gain as Soja has got to get rid of the ball quicker. He kind of dashed out to of Gibson. the pocket there when there was no reason to do that. He had two receivers, the outside receiver, Game which two, was open as soon as he caught the ball. Ball's got to come out quicker if Maurice Soja is going to have some success here in this late going in the game. Four twenty-one and counting third down and three from the 32-yard line. 
two receivers to the left, tight end and wide out to the right. Give us to Anderson straight ahead. He's got space. Good hole. Anderson's going to pick up about 15 Anderson or 16 on yards carry. on the carry. The third and two converted easily. And a big gain for Anthony Anderson on the straight ahead zone play. Gain is good for a first down. So inside zone, very effective on that, uh, on that call there for the PRP Panthers. Ball spotted at the 13-yard line, so first and 10 from the 13. And again, this is the fourth time that the Panthers have had good deep penetration into North Harden territory. Another interception. Interception. Holy cow. Is that Patry again? By Ian Patry. That is the third interception Number for Ian Patry on the game. On the night. Uh, the ball again right through the hands of the receiver and so every time the Panthers have First and ten, gotten Trojans deep in Trojan territory eight. an error uh, an interception thrown several of those on drop balls uh, that hit receivers in the hands and then one on just a horrible decision on a throw over the middle on a fourth and goal from the three so mistake uh, mistake free football is something that and neither of these teams is really embracing, and certainly the, the Panthers have shot themselves in the foot any time they've had opportunities to score. So the snap again to give to Lavelle Wright. He's going to break it back to the left side. He's got a lot of yards, Love about 11 it. yards. On the That'll carry. be a Excuse me, Wright on the carry. First down on an 11 yard run. Game 11 for a first down, Trojans. So the clock continues to run, 349, 348, 7, 6, 5. Again, the Trojans lead 34 to nothing. They line up from their left hash, trips formation to the right. Quick screen to Ramaj Adams. A couple of tacklers had chances at him, could not make the play. There are blockers in front. Ramaj Adams with a big gainer. Had an opportunity to free safety. Number seven is going to make the play. And uh, that's going to be a gain of over 40 yards there. They were on the 19-yard line, and they're going to take it all the way to the 37-yard line. Gain is good line. for a 43 yards and a first down Trojans. A 43-yard gain, maybe 44-yard gain for Maj Adams on the screen pass. Good blocking out in front by his uh, receiver buddies there. Two wide receivers to each side. Give us to Lavelle Wright. Straight ahead. Kind of lost his feet. Kept his balance, but finally brought down. Lavelle Wright on the carry. After a gain of uh, about seven or eight, it's going to bring up a second down and short. Seven-yard gain. Second and second three. Second and three. Ball is just inside the 30-yard line. Right hash, Wimberly ready for the snap. Takes a snap, they're gonna give to Wright again. Wright shrugs one defender off, shrugs two more off. Strong run by Lavelle Wright. Wright. on the carry. A big first down, gainer there, about a six yard gain, but that was an impressive run. He shrugs several first down defenders Trojans. off. And it looks like at this point, and rightfully so, Coach Thompson's going to go to the run. He's going to grind clock. He's going to use uh, two wide receivers jump off sides. In fact, uh, they're 10 Ball yards downfield. Ball start on the Trojans, loss of five. First and 15. Both Josh Moore and Marcus Harris uh, looked like they were breaking to the post. Maybe we were going to see, see a throw there. It looked like they were ready to run a good route. But nobody else was ready to go, so uh, that'll bring first and 15 as the ball will move back five yards. The Trojans will have the ball at the 29-yard line, first and 15. Snap. Wimberly looking at for the screen to Harris, the middle screen. Harris makes the catch. Good tackle, not much there. Wimberly's that pass is complete That's to Harris. Diamante Stringer, one of the leading Gain of tacklers. four, second and 11. For the Panthers, and so Stringer makes a play. I haven't called his name much tonight. That was uh, one of Coach's key players. Coach Williams was noting Stringer's uh, 
contributions to their defense this year, but he has not been a big factor. Looks more like a zone look here by the Panthers. Four-man rush, and boy, they are there in a hurry. Wimberley uh, sacked on the play. Wimberley is going to go down on by the third Compton. down and ten. And Number 59, Jeremiah Brown was there. And number three, Jerry Compton was also there on the sack. So a couple of guys getting to Wimberley on that, I'm sorry, on that second down and long play, second and 15 after the penalty there. It's going to bring up a third down and 17. And so Wimberley has lots of time this time. He overthrew, and it's intercepted. Number 22 making the interception. He's going to run it back out of the end zone, and he's going to be tackled at about the 12-yard line. So the first time we've seen a, um, an interception, but we've seen back-to-back -back turnovers now on the Trojans. And so, again, the tendency of the Trojan offense Ball's to get a little sloppy zone. from time to time has reared its ugly head again. So with 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter, PRP – Unsportsmanlike against over. PRP. There is an unsportsmanlike conduct call against PRP, so they will be packed up. And uh, this is not an enviable situation to be have first the ball. and ten at the ten yard line. Uh, deep in your own territory, um, they're just inside the five yard line, I believe. First and ten at the eight. So ball's at the eight yard line, actually just inside the 10. Ball was overthrown that time. Wimberly was going for Josh Moore on a post route, just overthrew. There's Soja making the fake and making a good run, getting the ball out of his own end. Soja. Getting it up to the just over the 20-yard line. Big 11-12 yard carry, 12-yard carry for Soja. Gain of 12. Again, showing his athleticism, First down getting out of there in a hurry after the, uh, the fake to the halfback, Anderson making a uh, good yardage on that play. Give this time to Anderson. The clock Anderson is going to run the carry. out. He got about a two or three yard gain and there Tackled is the by a horn. host of Trojans. Um, number 22 is Zach at Kelly the end of three, the interception for Trojans so 34, the three PRP here, zero. The Trojans still lead 34 to nothing. Again, nothing offensively going well for either squad right now. Trojans with two turnovers in the third quarter, and we have the same score to end the third quarter that we had to end the second quarter. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing services for all of your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bargetown, and Louisville, online at physicaltherapyky.com. Ryan Harris of Remax Premier Properties. For all your real estate needs, contact Ryan at 270-723-4626 and he'll get the job done. Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. Ketan Exterminating, 737-6900, online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point, or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. And so as we change ends, the as I mentioned before, the score is the same. Panthers have a second down and six from their own 24-yard line. Play action, look, quick slant, thrown to number 15. Flag on the play. Looks like they're going to also get a on the tackle a face mask call or so does pass it's complete for the first down face mask Again, 15, against the Trojans Clayton Helm on the catch and it was a face mask call on the Trojans first and ten at the fifty yard line so the half price burgers get your warm half price burgers. First and 10, just over the 50-yard line. They're in Trojan territory. The quick screen thrown to Helm and 
yeah, that, there was nothing there on that one as uh, number 10, Michael Lunds, almost beat the ball to the receiver there. It was Helm trying to make the catch and run, but Lunds Passes put a hit on him just as he caught, caught the football, and it'll be a three-yard loss. So second down and 13 now, back on the other side of the 50, on their own side of the field. Panthers have, Panthers have the ball at the 30, excuse me, the 48-yard line. Two receivers to the right, tight end and wide out to the left. Trying to draw the Trojans offside again. Fake. Soja missing, making two guys miss, but not Lunds. Lunds, two plays in a row, making Soja big tackles, very Tackle sure by Lunds. tackles. And Michael Lunds is a phenomenal no player in that inside. Previous tackles no by game, third down and 13. Again from their own 48-yard line. So the clock continues to tick. But there are stoppages in action as the 36-point uh, running clock margin has not been met as the Trojans have not been able to add to their lead here in the third quarter and now into the fourth. Screen pass quickly away from Soja. Runner still on his feet. I didn't see who Soja. it was. It might have been Helm. A pass big is pickup. It's going to be a first down on that screen pass out to the left. I believe it's good for two. A first Anthony down. Anderson, the back out of the backfield on a traditional looking screen call, but it was a very quick screen. A lot like the old run and shoot quick screens uh, to the running back. And so Anderson makes the quick catch and gets about 15 straight ahead up the sideline. Brings up first and 10. They're on the 36 yard line of the Trojans. Give us to Anderson. And nowhere to go. Darren Give us to Green Anderson. Right there. It may have been a loss of one as uh, he was met at the line by Darren Green, number four. No gain. So second down and 10 for the Panthers. 10-19, 10-18, the clock is ticking and ticking down, not to be overly dramatic, ticking down to history as the North Harden Trojans about to put a cap on this regular season at 10-0. It's been a phenomenal performance out of a number of these Trojan players. Ian Patry with three interceptions the entire defense has again been phenomenal for the Trojans. It's going to be a bootleg pass. Looking back to the throwback up the left sideline. Oh my goodness. The running back after Soldier's receiving pass the fake incomplete. ran a wheel route up the left sideline as, as the quarterback bootlegged to the right and then threw back. It's just a little throwback. Unfortunately, hit him right in the hands. He was open Third to the sideline. Was probably going to get at least to the 10 yard line before Jordan Lovett, the free safety, could track him down. But it uh, looked like he had his hands backwards. Uh, I don't know. That was for a kid who is so athletic and such a good runner. That looked very clumsy going for the football. Um, had an easy catch and, and just didn't make it. Tight end trips to the right. Motion across by Helm. The fake and Soja's got it. He's got space and he makes a nice cut back to the left. And he Soja is on the carry. I believe that's Lunds again, just short of the first down, just putting the smack down on Maurice Soja. So with a uh, gain of eight, fourth, fourth and down two. coming up. Tackled by Lunds. It's an eight yard gain, and uh, it's going to bring fourth and two up from just inside the 30 yard line. The ball is sitting on about the 29. Trojan fans, fourth and two. So they need to get to about the 27 yard line for the first down do the Panthers tight end to the right Anderson set to the left of the quarterback Soja oh. timeout called by Coach timeout. Williams and PRP, PRP. Coach They're Williams didn't like half. something that he saw there I wouldn't like what I'm looking at either when I look at that North Harden defense if I were Coach Williams this is an HCC TV student production, a division of Hardin County School. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom Physical Therapy Associates, Ryan Harris of REMAX Premier Properties, Bluegrass Cellular, Etown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tune in weekly for rebroadcasts of all local HCC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2 and Spectrum Communications on Channel 184. So 8.55 to go here, and again, our score is 34 to nothing. The Trojans in a good spot here to pick up win 10 in 10 tries. 
And uh, their defense here has been, again, the story. Uh, they shut out the Bruins, who are a high-powered offense last week. They have this PRP offense that has had scoring opportunity after scoring opportunity. They have stuffed them at just the right moments every time. Soja under center this time. There's motion. There's a fake. Good grief. He does You're watching this as, as well as I am it. here on your television Denied. screen. Uh, they go in motion. They try to run an inside handoff. I believe some sort of a, a misdirection and trap back the other way. And the back runs right into the quarterback. So um, we've seen several fourth down attempts by PRP. They have converted none of them. Uh, and several of them, including the jet sweep that went for a five yard loss, have just been really poor attempts. Uh, you'd be better off just running it straight down their throats and seeing what you can get. Wimberley under pressure again is gonna take a shot at Marcus Harris up the left sideline. And um, flag on the throw play. is just a little out of the reach. That is Wembley's a very late is flag. Incomplete, intended for Harris. And um, it looks like it's going to be a um, an interference There's call. There's an injured PRP player on, on the field. Number 27, who is Demonte Stringer. I'm sorry, Stringer. 29, 29 Stringers down on the field. 27. Pass interference. Was who the call was on. Against PRP. 27 is Deshaun Barkley. That and, play will um, be good for a first down. I don't know if I like that call. There may have been contact early, but again, it's it's a it's a matter of the defender uh, not making a play on the ball, just running into the receiver. It looked to me like it was close. He may have been early. He may not. Have, we don't have replay, <laughs> so it's. Um, going to be a good pickup for the Trojans. It's going to be an automatic first down, I believe. So the Trojans will keep this drive alive here as Demonte Springer, excuse me, Stringer, number 29 for PRP, will be helped off the field. He's limping a little bit, but he's going to get off under his own power. So that's Ladies good. and gentlemen, Demonte Stringer. A good uh, visual for us to see him walking off under his own power. First and 10 Trojans at the 45 yard line. So the Trojans are at their own 45, middle of the field. Two receivers to each side. Lavelle Wright is going to be set in front of and to the left of Manny Wimberly, which to me means look for a pass. He is there set up to protect. Ball is thrown up the left sideline. Good play by the defender. Wimberly's pass intended for Adams is Number incomplete. Number 22, Kelly. And number 22, who made the interception on the last uh, possession. Again, that's Zach Kelly. Does a good job this time. They tried to throw the out and up to Ramaj Adams. He scored on that play earlier. Kelly did a great job staying with him that time. He's learned from the previous uh, attempt. Second down and 10 now. Wimberly looking for Cameron Smith on the hitch route. Smith just finds the opening in the zone. Wimberly's pass and, is uh, complete. Catch, tuck, turn, and a the good Cameron seven Smith. or eight yards after the catch. The gain is a good really for good a first play down there. I love it when a receiver turns directly upfield. It, it seems like a lot of guys want to run sideways to try to make plays. and. Usually you'll split defenders. Usually you'll get more yards turning straight up the field. And uh, Cameron did a great job of doing that on that play. So first and 10 for the Trojans from the Panther 41-yard line. 8-17 and counting. Smith in motion back deep to the left. He's now covered. Wimberly running for his life. He's trying to find space. He's going to throw it to Cameron Smith up the sideline just out of bounds. Maybe Wimberly's thrown away there, in fact. Uh, for Smith. Good idea just to get rid of that one for Wimberly. He had Second nowhere to go. Smith had turned up the sideline, but really was not a good option as far as throwing the ball up in that case. So 8.04 now remaining, and the incomplete pass will stop the clock. We have a Panther player down on the field. He tried to get off the field. Injured Panther. It's number 16 for the Panthers. That's Jackson Carey, and uh, Jackson is not uh, getting off the field under his own power at this point. He started to 
started to walk back to try to get off the field or get to the to the uh, to his defensive position, and he just went down at that point. Could not get back where he was uh, trying to go. This is Hardin County Education and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Physical therapy associates more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville online at physicaltherapyky.com. Ryan Harris of Remax Premier Properties. For all your real estate needs, contact Ryan at 270-723-4626 and he'll get the job done. Bluegrass Cellular offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. E-Town Exterminating, 737-6900 online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Or find us online at westpointbank.com. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. Carey's able to get himself off the field slowly under his own power, and we'll pick up there. Second down and 10 from the Panther 41-yard line. This time it's Logan Coleman checking in at quarterback. So Wimberley will come out. Coleman will check in. The give up inside is to Alex White. Normally does the punting duty, so the uh, the backup White running back has got a, about carry. a 22-yard gain, 20-yard gain down to almost the 20-yard line there. And uh, so big run by Alex White there. First just a straight ahead. It Trojan. looked like a zone play. It didn't look like a trap. So straight zone blocking. And uh, there was a seam. And, boy, he hit it like a flash. Showed a lot of speed. Two wide receivers to each side. Number 16, Logan Coleman at the quarterback position now. Coleman started off the year with a lot of minutes. He's going to give to White again. He's going to break it around the outside. And this time dropped by number 59, Brown, on the play. And so... Uh, not so much going there on that uh, on the second Loss attempt of one, for White. By Brown. It's going to come back to about the 22-yard line and bring up a second down and 11 for the Trojans. So we'll see what Coleman can do here with seven minutes remaining. He's certainly a good option at quarterback. He's got experience. He had a high completion percentage in those first few games that he played. Doesn't quite have the arm talent that Wimberley has, but certainly a good option at quarterback for the Trojans. Looking down the field, good throw, dropped. So he had a uh, quick pass. hitch. Incomplete. From uh, number 88 there. For Moore. And that's, uh, I, believe, I believe, that's Jalen Moore. Number 88, and so uh, Moore couldn't handle it. Ball hit him right Third in the hands. And so a good opportunity to pick up a, a lot of what they needed for a first down has gone by the boards, and it'll be third down and 11 now. As Coleman will set the offense. Blitz looks like it's coming. It's a man look. He should look down the field for it. Oh, my goodness. He had an opportunity. Tried to Coleman's dump it to White out of the backfield. Just slightly Fourth overthrown. Down. White had... A lot of space, as in that man cover look, whoever, whatever linebacker was responsible for the back out of the backfield didn't pay any attention. If they can connect right there, White probably scores, as there was no one in coverage there. So on fourth down and 11 from the 22, they're going to send Caden Logsdon on and see what the young man can do. The sophomore, I've seen him kick uh, some field goals of this length before. Uh, he's got about 38 yards here. Big moment, great opportunity for some practice here for Caden. He's kind of mishit that one low and to the right, Lawson's and it will not no quite good. get through. It looks like to me, I've seen Caden in a couple of long field goal situations in the last several weeks, and it really looks like he's over kicking on those uh, longer field goal attempts. When you watch him on an extra point, he's pounding those things and kicking them all the way to the track. It's because he's just making an easy swing at it and just knocking the ball. If he would make the exact same uh, motion on those longer field goals, he's going to have a great opportunity because he's making solid contact and hitting the ball. So, again, no points in this second half. And we've got the reverse pass again here. And the ball is thrown to Soja. He's got a chance. He's going to catch the football. If he doesn't trip right there, he may score. 
Um, Maurice Sahuja on the throwback. They ran that in the first early down, in the PRP. first quarter. And it's the reverse pass. Anderson gets the ball, gives it to Anderson, number five. We have number two Anderson, number five Anderson. Number five throws the ball to Maurice Soja, the quarterback out of the backfield. So the same trick play, it works this time. Quick hitch, excuse me, quick slant. So to helm, number 15, the and that's going to be another first down. So a couple first of down, quick PRP. hitting plays for PRP. And guess what? For the fifth or sixth time, they get inside the 30-yard line. I think it's the sixth time. They've been inside the Trojan 30-yard line. They've got zero points to show for it at this at this time. So trips wide left. Quick throw to the right. It's a it's a, a quick hit. So this pass is complete. To Anderson, to Anderson the five. And it's going to be another nice gain. Actually, uh, first down PRP. Got a little further than hitch. That must have been like a 10-yard curl route because he gets the first down. So they continue to move the chains inside the 20 now to about the 18-yard line. Give it to, is to Anderson. Anderson breaks a tackle, breaks another, and a third in the end zone. Anderson, PRP touchdown. Panthers. Anthony Anderson, number two, is going to get the score for the Panthers. So they're on the board. 5.46 to go in the fourth quarter here. In my earlier statement, again, I'm wrong a lot, I guess. I don't know. But my earlier statement about the question of when North Harden would get to the running clock in this half has turned out to not be true as the Trojans still have not put a score on the board here in the second half. And now the Panthers finally culminate a drive. Their sixth time inside the Trojan 30-yard line. They finally get points. The kick, the weekly hit, is right through the uprights. The extra point and try that'll is be good. PRP it's Panthers 7, so a good half. Um, Trojans 34, PRP drive 7. by the Panthers. Finally get uh, a score on the board here with 5.46 to go. Trojans 34, Panthers 7. This is an ACEC TV student production. At the half. The division of the Hardin County Central Schools. Harden Special thanks to our zero. live sports coverage sponsor, Brainberg Telecom Physical Therapy Associates, Ryan Harris of Remax Premier Properties, Bluegrass Cellular, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tune in weekly for rebroadcasts of all H local HCEC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2, and Spectrum Communications on Channel 184. scoring update and this may be uh, 45 minute or an hour old as we look forward here with 546 to go in this game and it looks like PRP is setting up for an onside kick but uh, score update from Oldham County South Oldham is up on at the half they were up on the Central Harden Bruins 28 to nothing so the 8 and 1 Oldham Co South Oldham um, more recovers the, the onside kick having their way with the Bruins. The Bruins uh, experienced a little bit of a hangover the from their loss last week as well. South Oldham is an 8-1 squad. Uh, they run the option, which not a lot of teams run anymore. But those who run it and run it well can be absolutely deadly, especially when you see it once a year. Uh, these, these kids are not used to seeing option football, and so the Bruins have all they can handle. Okay, so two minutes later, I have another update, and that's a final. And that's South Oldham 43, Central Harden 7. So Central Harden having a real rough night tonight, and we'll see if they can't get themselves back on track as HCEC TV. Fumbles recovered by PRP. Well, we've got a fumble, and again, this is a third turnover now in this second half. Your Trojans, final score again, from sloppy. South Oldham. Central Harden 7, South Oldham 43. So, as the announcements made here at North Harden, the uh, fans all cheer. I wouldn't cheer too much if the team I just barely beat seven to nothing just got beat forty-three to seven. That's uh, that's that's a little bit uh, problematic and troublesome here. But here, no trouble, uh, as the Trojans are putting a bow on this season. Uh, 
throw up the left sideline. This time, Anderson at quarterback, Soja at wide receiver. And they're going to say he pass. didn't come up with it. Uh, sure looked like he had that up the left sideline at the 20-yard line for about a 30-yard gain, but uh, the ball hits the ground there. So, um, so as I was saying, again, the Bruins are going to limp into the playoffs, uh, struggling on a two-game losing streak. And we will see them next week at Central Harden against Meade County. We certainly expect them to take care of business after dispatching Meade County earlier in the year by a significant margin. We certainly expect North Harden to take care of business Anderson here at home next week against Barron County, setting up round two uh, what we expect to be a phenomenal uh, gain of one. Third and district nine. championship game in round two of the playoffs. That will be here again. North Harden has won by winning the game last week, seven to nothing. They have won the home field advantage for round two. So we'll be back here in two weeks uh, for, for North Harden hosting Central Harden for the district championship game. We expect that to be a fantastic effort or fantastic game between these two uh, very well matched, very, uh, very solid football teams. Anderson's gonna throw the quick hitch out to the side. That's Zach Kelly with the catch for a first down. There's a late flag, flag coming flag. in. I'm not sure what that's going to be. They're going to step that off against the Trojans, so uh, PRP moving the ball again. Certainly, as you look out on the field at the Trojan defense, you see that Coach Thompson is taking this opportunity to play uh, a number of his players here. Uh, which is what you would expect Coach Thompson to do in this case. So you don't have some of the top stars and top talent on the field for the Trojans. And so uh, there are, it might be expected that this PRP offense would be able to move the ball. Anthony Anderson just broke four tackles, and he'll go into the end zone for his second touchdown Anderson in goes about in a minute and a half here. Out. So touchdown PRP. the uh, turnovers and poor tackling of this uh, second team here for the Trojans is uh, giving a little bit of life to that PRP sideline. Now again, you know, we, we talked earlier about how I, I mentioned last week against North Harden, how, excuse me, against Central Harden, how I didn't see how anybody ever scored against the North Harden defense. And the answer to that question is, this is how it happens when you are uh, well ahead in a football game and you're playing some of your uh, backups. The other answer was just mistakes, uh, that sometimes mistakes are made. And, and Extra points, see, no uh, good, with 422 left to go other in the game. Trojans 34, done. PRP 13. By the Some mistakes made by that North Hard defense can be costly, and so that is those are the situations in which you see teams score against this North Hard defense. Again, this is one of those when they have a big lead and it's not the first crew on the field. And uh, when you have a varsity a team as talented as PRP and you've got some of your second, maybe even third team players on the field, you'd expect PRP to have some success. Uh, you're hoping that your, your young kids will execute and keep them off the board, but certainly you, you'd expect a drop off when you go from your first team, especially your first team as talented as this North Harden defense. So 4.22 to go in this football game, and the PRP Panthers will kick again. Uh, last time they tried the onside kick, the Trojans did a great job of fielding that kick. It looks like they've set that up again. It's uh, on the tee, sitting a little funny there, and kicker from PRP is going to just roll that straight ahead, hoping to get a good bounce. And there was a bit of a scrap on the ground for the ball, and the kicker for PRP comes up with it as he chased his own kick straight ahead. It bounced funny. It avoided the uh, North Harden player. Number 27 was not able to get to the ball, and the kicker for PRP was able to recover. And so PRP's offense will line up again. Oh, by the way, 
I see a number of the first teamers back on the field for North Harden as they've given up a couple of straight touchdowns. It's now 34 to 13. Coach Thompson not wanting to take any chances here. He's gonna send several of his first teamers back out onto the field to seal away the victory here. Ball's thrown deep down the left side. And there's gonna be a penalty thrown. That ball is thrown five yards out of bounds and I'm not sure how they're gonna call a pass interference call, but they're gonna call it. It's it's gonna be a first uh, first down yardage for the Panthers here. The pass was intended for number 27, Deshaun Barkley up that left sideline. We've seen him playing in the defensive backfield for the Panthers. And so the throw was just a prayer up the left sideline. Pass interference Again, against the Trojans. We have him resurge back at quarterback for the Panthers. The ball is now on the 31 yard line of the Trojans. So again, uh, deep into Trojan territory. Given to Anderson, and this time about four yards. Anderson on Certainly the carry. Certainly not gonna break the tackle that time of Isaiah Beasley and Jarrell Campbell. Gain of six. And even number 43, Vesey Lilo. So Soja is second down and five now. He actually picks up five, not four on the play. Down to the 26 yard line. Trips formation to the left. Fakes the screen pass. He's got a man up the seam. Reed, touchdown. That Soldier is number Reed. eight, Reed, touchdown, right down the yards. seam. Just running by the safety. And uh, a little bit of a stunned silence here in the uh, in the crowd. I, I, I don't think there's really anything to be concerned about it. 338 remaining in the game. Certainly the Trojans will ice this thing away. It would take nothing short of a miracle for anything else to happen here, but uh, certainly a little bit antsy and a little bit uncomfortable. Ball's kicked through by the Panthers, and the Panthers are pretty excited. Their sidelines pretty excited. To go in 338 the game. remaining. Trojans 34, PRP 20. There is a Trojan player down on the field. It looks like it might be it's either Beasley or Campbell. Might be Jarrell Campbell, and he Andrew is on Trojan. the ground. They went really hard to try to block that uh, extra point attempt. Jarrell Campbell. I believe the extra point attempt was missed. Uh, and again, with 338 remaining, the Trojans are ahead 34 to 20, so they're still up two scores with 338 to go. I'm sure the Panthers are going to try another onside kick, but the bigger concern right now is Jarrell Campbell laying on the field right now is the star of the um, North Harden defense is uh, in a little bit of distress right now. You know, Octavius Oxendine receives, and well, he should. He's an amazing athlete. He's an amazing young man and student. But Octavius Oxendine, with his size and with all the recruit, uh, recruiting he's receiving, gets a lot of the accolades. But if you ask Coach Williams from PRP and the film he watched, who concerns him? is Jarrell Campbell. Uh, that was who he mentioned when I talked to him before the game. Jarrell is just the most disruptive and explosive player. He's in the backfield in a flash. He's so quick, so quick to the ball. And again, the word Coach Williams used was explosive for Jarrell Campbell. So a lot of concern from the North Harden faithful as he's still down and being looked at. This is a Hardin County Educational Community Television Student Production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Ryan Harris of Remax Premier Properties for all of your real estate needs. Contact Ryan at 270-723-4626 and he'll get the job done. Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. Etown Exterminating, 737-6900, online at mugabug.com. 
West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point, or find us online at westpointbank.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jarrell Campbell. Let us help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. So as I'm reading the thanks to our sponsors here, they have Jarrell Campbell on his feet. Uh, he is being helped off the field by training staff and coaching staff. He is not putting any weight on that left leg. I can't tell if it's knee or ankle that he's favoring. But uh, several of his teammates coming out to offer their support. Uh, if help needed, I'm sure they're willing to help carry their friend and partner off the field. But Jarrell uh, making a big effort to try to get to that extra point. Something happened to his left leg. It looks to me like a knee. He's putting enough pressure and weight on that foot that it, I don't think it can be ankle. It's probably knee. So I'm sure that will be evaluated and, and the Trojan faithful will hold their breath. I think they would be just fine without Jarrell playing Barron County. There's the onside kick again, and it's bouncing funny. But the Trojans will recover. It looked like Cameron Smith, number two. No, it's 21 uh, coming up with the ball there. Cameron the PRP Smith player is down as he with went, the recovery. For the, uh, went for the ball there. First and ten Trojans. He's working himself up. That's number 34 there. Been very active and been a very big part of what they've been doing tonight on the defensive side of the ball. And that's 34, uh, Kylon Malone. So, um, you know, Campbell is a, an invaluable part of this Trojan defense. This front seven is one of the best I've ever seen. And uh, certainly Barron County won't pose, I wouldn't think, much of a challenge going into next week into round one of the playoffs. But certainly they're going to really need his presence as they face Central Harden and then obviously beyond that where they would likely face Manuel in round three if they can manage to get by the Trojans. Give to Lavelle right. Lavelle back in the game. Big hole over the left side. He's got a lot of space running down the sideline to the 11-yard line. Lavelle right. That is a... 44-yard, 54-yard carry Gain for Lavelle Wright. 44 for a first down He's at the 46. Trojans. He's at a 44-yard carry. 328 and counting. And so now the Trojans, again, looking to do a certainly the rest of us here in attendance expected to happen long, long ago, and that's ice this game. And it looks like that's been done, giving the ball to Lavelle Wright. The ball will be at the 11-yard line, first and 10. Wimberly waiting for the snap. Two wide receivers to each side, left hash. 3-10 and counting. They're waiting for the clock to run down. They're going to use all of the play clock that they can use. Wimberly waiting for the signal to go ahead and get the snap. Motion by Ramaj Adams. It's going to be a jet sweep action to Ramaj Adams. Makes a cut up off of a good Lavelle right block. Into the end zone, Ramaj, Ramaj Adams. Adams. So a nice 11, play on the jet 10, sweep to Ramaj five, Adams. Lavelle four, right three, getting two, a nice one. block out in front. Touchdown. And touchdown for the Trojans. Trojans. So Ramaj Adams. whatever nervousness was felt six. in the uh, stadium to Excuse me, one Lavelle Wright run, one Ramaj Adams run, and uh, the, the margin is again pushed up to three scores. Um, and Caden Logston will come on to try to make it a 41 to 20 ball game with 252 remaining. Snap is good. Kick up and through. And you just notice again there on that kick, the ball Logston's landed kick four or five yards good. With short of the track. To go. In the ball game, Trojans That was so easily hit. PRP it was a little bit low. It 20. didn't come out great, but it was so easily hit and probably had enough to get there from 35 to 38 yards. Uh, he just on those on those uh, field goals has got to relax and take his time on the approach and just hit the ball solidly. If he'll do that, he's got plenty of leg to knock through some of those kicks. They may need one of those uh, later on in the season, so every opportunity they give him, to get a shot at a field goal try like they did earlier is important, but he's just got to relax and hit the ball solidly. He's got plenty of leg. Uh, you can certainly see it on those extra point tries as the ball flies almost to the track or onto the track several times. It's plenty of leg to be good from 40 yards and in. And so that 38-yarder that he hit earlier that didn't ever have a chance 
Uh, it just looked like he was he was quick and and uh, you know trying too hard, pressing, uh, trying to kick the ball harder than he normally does, and that's a mistake. And so he's going to hit a uh, ground ball. This time he's going to bounce sideways and go out of bounds. And there have been a lot of turnovers, a lot of penalties in this European game. European will take over first and ten. A little longer than you might have expected. At the 35 yard line. So the Panthers will take over again. They've had a lot of success, obviously, on line. this side of the ball here in the last uh, quarter, here in the fourth quarter, where they've put a number of points on the board in basically the last five minutes uh, that they've had the ball. A couple of Trojan turnovers contributed to that. But now we're seeing a number of the Trojan first group back on the field and uh, Anthony Adams is going backwards this time. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage by Crow. So that's number 40 Crow on the play in the backfield and so uh, a good start for this Trojan defense. Loss of five. Has given up 20 points here in the last five minutes of action. It'll be second and 15. PRP will have the ball at its own 35-yard line, 220 and counting now. Soja at the quarterback position again. Two wide receivers wide to each side, and it looks like number 59, Brown, is going to jump off sides for PRP, and it'll become false start second on PRP. Loss of five, so second and 25. The Trojans getting themselves back in their normal mode, which is being very steady and very staunch on the defensive side of the ball. You'll notice one deep safety, that's Jordan Lovett. He's going to shade the wide side of the field here just slightly. Leave Ian Patrick down here kind of on an island in what looks like a cover three zone look. Down the seam is where to go against that. And so this the, pass uh, is incomplete. Tender for Helms. The dime package. Third and 20. Got, got more number 20 who has checked in and I call it like a, it's actually like a nickel package where you put a fifth defensive back on the field. He's not playing corner, he's playing more of an outside backer, but I, he's not usually an outside linebacker in this defense, he's usually a corner. But they've got him playing at an outside backer at this point to uh, give an extra defensive back, especially here now over to this trip side, gives them a little bit of an advantage. Soja looking to his left, just a little early, trying to get the ball to Zach Kelly, number 22. So this pass the ball is came out before Kelly, Kelly had turned, Fourth which down. is usually a good idea as long as you're time, timed up correctly and the receiver can turn and make the catch. But uh, when Kelly turned, he couldn't find the ball in time to make the play. So it's going to bring up now fourth down and 20, and the offense remains on the field, which, again, down three scores, you don't begrudge that to the coach, to Coach Williams. Certainly might expect him to do that. He's looking to throw a screen to Anderson, and there is uh, Beasley right there to knock the ball so away. Very easily could have intercepted that ball Beasley on the, on the screen coverage. pass. And so Beasley does a great job finding the screen, working to the running back, Anderson, and knocking that thing away. So on fourth and 20, PRP goes to a screen pass. Not a horrible idea, just you know, could not execute that. Uh, even to make the completion there. So 158 to go. The Trojans offense back on the field. It's Lavelle Wright at the running back spot. Give is to Wright over the right side. He's going to plow ahead for about right. eight or nine yards. On the carry. It's going to be down to about the 27 or 28 yard line. Going to bring up about a second down and four. Gain of six, second and four. The 23 yard line, 128 and counting. Lavelle right. Cutting back to his left, breaking two tackles. Wow. Lavelle Wright goes wow. 23, 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
Touchdown! So Lavelle Wright broke a couple of tackles. There was a nice hole there. At the second level with the Inhale linebackers. He made a couple men six. miss. But then uh, number 18, Nicholas Manice, who's a sophomore, one of the sophomore uh, studs for for PRP. Uh, he kind of just mailed that one in. He's, he just uh, kind of gave up on that play and didn't really attempt to make a tackle on that play. And so with 108 remaining, Lavelle Wright puts another score on, uh, on the board here. And the kick by Logston will be through, and it's good, and that'll make it 48 Logs to 20. So quickly, is good with after giving up three the straight game. scores, Trojans, Trojans go back to their first offense. They go back PRP to their workhorse. 20. They go to Lavelle Wright, and good move, Coach, because uh, Lavelle Wright uh, has quickly extended this lead back out, 48 to 20. And so with 108, they'll kick it back to the Panthers. Uh, and uh, the Panthers will see if they can't get anything going here as as we are seeing a lot of scores. We've seen five scores, I believe, in the last six minutes of play. So a lot, a lot going on here at the end of this ball game. And uh, not much of it super consequential to the outcome. I don't think the outcome has been in doubt since uh, mid-second quarter. But certainly uh, interesting series of events and Caden Logston will hit this one deep it'll be caught at about the 11 yard line returned by Helm he's got some space he broke through a little there he's going to get back to about the 37 maybe the 36 yard line on the left hash and so the Panthers will take over there the Trojans will look to finish this thing off on the defensive side of the football here Soja taking the snap, and there's a whistle. Flag down. Offside against the Trojans. And the defense has jumped, so it'll be first down and five now from the 41-yard line. Panthers will have it. So Soja looking for the uh, call from the sideline. Coach Williams signaling in the play. 48 to 20 with a minute remaining. First and five. And the Trojans jump off sides again. So uh, not having a whole lot of discipline here at the end of the game. That'll be a first and 10 now up to the 46 yard line. Against the Trojans. 10 yards gained and uh, no time really run off the clock here as um, that is about the seventh. I think that's the seventh offsides penalty for the Trojans. So they're going to have to really work on the idea of where are your eyes as a defensive lineman. The eyes, certainly you're, you're reading what's happening on the field and the guy in front of you. Your eye is always supposed to be on the football. You know, uh, Beasley jumped, but uh, it's going to be on PRP because Ball start against PRP. the uh, wide Ball's receiver five. on the far left jumped as well. So. Uh, North Harden bailed out that time from their eighth offsize penalty because one of the PRP Panthers jumped early as well. So they're going to have to get their eye focus and mental focus um, in the right place here as they go into the playoffs. If people see this film, I have a feeling they may want to uh, try to vary the count to see if they can slow down this North Harden rush. That pass broken up by number four, so this pass is Green. incomplete. Green, Green uh, on the coverage. Had a fingertip on it and thought he might be able to bring it in. He is a very talented player. He certainly might be able to pull in a ball even with just a one-hand uh, play. So second down and 15 now as they went 10 yards forward, five yards back. Give this time to Anderson. He's got space, and he is through there in a flash. 
Uh, he's got about 12 yards. He's over midfield, and it'll bring up about a second, excuse me, bring up three yards. He'll need Anderson. three more for a first down. Get maybe third down and three, maybe third and four uh, to about the 49-yard line of the Trojans. The clock, however, continues to wind on the running play. We're down to 30 seconds. Just inside 30 seconds, Sojo will take the snap. Looking to his right, he's going to take a shot at Anderson there. And Pat, oh, my goodness. Ian Patrick was hit right in the helmet with a chance at his fourth interception so of the game. So this pass is incomplete. And uh, he was by taking Patrick. a shot at number five, Anderson, up the right sideline. He had single coverage uh, to the single receiver side. They were overloading the left with a trips formation, trying to get single coverage for Anderson. And uh, Soja, the, the great athlete that he is, didn't really understand the coverage there as Patrick was way deep. All he had to do is throw a back shoulder throw uh, behind the receiver. The receiver could have stopped and come back to him and would have had an easy completion. Soja on the fake on fourth and four. is going to be about a yard short. The Trojans will take over on downs. So there's going to be a yard seconds. shy. Trojans will and take over. The Panthers first and ten. could not pick up the, the fourth and four uh, play there. So the Trojan offense will be called upon to seal the victory here, probably in victory formation. The uh, Panthers do have timeouts remaining. I can't see Coach Williams burning those at this point, down 28 with 16 seconds to go. Uh, you'd hope it'll be one snap and over. Victory formation is, in fact, where they are. Lavelle right 20 yards back to protect against any sort of fumble and scoop. So he's ready. Manny Wimberly ready to take the snap. He's going to take a knee here. Under center snap, knee, ball given to the official. The official will spot it. And congratulations and about to be offered. And for the so first the, uh, time. last seconds tick away. In Trojan history. And the regular North season for the, the North Harden Trojans 10. will end and oh. with a 48-20 to 20 victory over the PRP Panthers. And historically, um, on this amazing night here at North Harden High School, the Trojans finished this regular season 10-0. and 0. Congratulations to the North Harden Trojans, Coach Thompson, the whole coaching staff, all the players for the phenomenally uh, consistent season it takes an awful lot to put together this kind of season so uh there's not a whole lot of wrap up to be done here except to say congratulations to the trojans it's a little bit of a bittersweet situation right here we're gonna i'm sure as hardin county football fans and north hardin uh football fans it's time to celebrate an amazing season but on the other hand, everybody's going to have an eye toward Jarrell Campbell. Everybody's going to be hoping and wishing that young man all the best, hoping that the injury will, will turn out to be uh, minor, slight, that we'll see him back on the field very soon. I'm sure they'll evaluate that over the next couple of days uh, to have some sort of um, uh, conclusion about what his status is and certainly we'll be, uh, we'll be interested to hear uh, that outcome. But from North Harden High School tonight, this is Paul Gray um, saying good night, everybody. Sports are on Brandenburg Channel 1, and all rebroadcasts are on Brandenburg and Comcast Channel 2, Spectrum Communications Channel 184, and on our YouTube site. Also check out our live sporting events on nfhs.com or visit us at harden.k12.ky.us. Harden County Educational Community Television, located in Harden County, Kentucky, a division of Harden County Schools, airing on Brandenburg, Comcast, Spectrum, and also airing online.
providing live coverage of local high school sports. Covering community and school events. While teaching students along the way. HCEC TV, the area's leading educational and government access channel. Training the next generation of media arts students. Control your home even when you're not there with Brandenburg Telecom's home automation service. Turn lights on and off, lock and unlock doors, and change settings on your thermostat using your smartphone or tablet. Stop worrying whether or not you remember to close the garage door and save money by programming your thermostat to reduce energy used when you're not home. Call Brandenburg Telecom for a free quote and enjoy the convenience of having home automation, phone, TV, and internet service all from one local company. All right, son, you ready to open your first savings account? Yes, I am. West Point Bank has been growing with our customers for over 30 years. We know what it takes to support them in every stage of their life. You need a bank that you know and trust to help you reach your goals and make your dreams come true. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. If pain is keeping you from doing the things you love, it's time to visit Physical Therapy Associates. We offer a variety of treatment options, including dry needling, A-STEM, tractions, and many other options to relieve pain. Many of our patients are able to avoid surgery and costly pain medication through our treatments. If you haven't tried these options, what are you waiting for? With six locations across Central Kentucky, pain relief is only a phone call away. Give Physical Therapy Associates a chance to get you out of pain. Physical Therapy Associates, friends helping friends. Hey everyone, Ryan here. I just wanted to announce some exciting news that I'm officially a licensed realtor. I've been a part of a championship winning basketball team, a conference winning Bellarmine golf team, and now I'm part of an award winning real estate team, JT Pitts and Associates at Remax Premier Properties. If you have any real estate questions, real estate needs, or just want to reach out, please don't hesitate to call or send me a message. My number is right below. I'm ready to bring that winning mentality to the real estate industry so I can give my clients the service they deserve. Thanks. Bluegrass Cellular's faster data speeds and more complete coverage keep you connected to your community, no matter where life takes you. Whether you're exploring your own backyard or forging new paths across the country. Talk better, text better, play better, and share better here there and everywhere bluegrass cellular your community expanded e-town exterminating a locally owned family-run pest control company has been serving hardin county and the surrounding area since 1976 E-Town Exterminating provides pest control for residential and commercial properties. E-Town Exterminating on Ring Road in Elizabethtown. Phone 737-6900. E-Town Exterminating. What the buzz is all about. For additional information on HCEC TV programming, call 270-769-8855 or email Gina Ryan at harden.kyschools.us. On behalf of HCEC TV, we would like to thank all of our live covered sponsors.